So, you know, ever since then, I've pretty much just been living off a, uh, a very standard diet of GMK interest checks and, uh, you know, the occasional the occasional group buy for dessert. Nice. What do, you, what do you do for snacks, then, if you need, like, a little snack during the day? Um, uh, are you familiar with Enjoy PBT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen that before. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty munchable. 
I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. Give him that. Cool. Not, not a bad snack. Not a bad snack. Nice. Nice. All right. So it sounds uh, good. Always good to look after yourself. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Depleted best peed giving me shit for not having a hoodie. My hoodie, I need to wash. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm wearing mine. Yeah. I I might have gotten a little food on mine because sometimes I'm a messy eater. So uh, mine, mine's uh, in my laundry ready to be ro- washed right after the stream, actually. Nice, nice. I, I rolled out of bed and I was cold, so I just grabbed it off yeah. the thing. I didn't actually know what hoodie I was wearing. Until I the morning, Honestly, was I wear that hoodie a lot of the time. Like, most of my days involve me wearing that hoodie for, like, at least half of it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love it. It's so comfy. Sometimes I wear it just oh, I... as a shirt. Like, I don't even wear a shirt under it. I just wear the hoodie. All right, so I did that the other day. So the uh, when uh, when the bin men or the refuse men, or I, can't, I don't know what you call it in, in America, when when they come and take the bins away and from, from, like, the rubbish, the household waste, whatever you call it, uh, garbage disposal, I guess you guys call it. I don't uh, know. Yeah, waste management. Yeah, I guess waste uh, management. Yeah, okay, we call it the bin men in the UK because it's nice and simple. The bin men. But I remember they, they were coming down the street with the uh, with the, the wagon to take, take everyone's bins away and empty them out into the into the wagon, and I needed to go and put our bin out because it was in the back garden. So I had to rush down. So I grabbed this hoodie, put it on without the shirt underneath, uh, pulled on some tracksuit bottoms, ran outside, put it out into the street, made the bin. It was fine. It was great. They, they took it away and like the rubbish out. Uh, but then I didn't put another t-shirt on all day because I liked how it felt against my skin. It's soft, right? It's soft. It's comfy. Yeah. It's it's pretty nice. Like I was even wearing it in bed the other day, like just while watching some uh, some anime. Oh, I couldn't do, couldn't do that. No, I couldn't do that. Yeah. Clothes in bed are a bad thing. I I usually don't wear clothes in bed, but I was a little chilly, and it was uh, it was the perfect the perfect thing I needed. <laughs> Tzark says, uh, uh, "quote unquote environmental engineers." <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of term. Yeah, I mean, we, we just, just call, call it the bin men. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're referring to the people, we just call them like garbage men. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, bin men, like, garbage men. It's, yeah, it's, it's all differences. It's all the yeah. all the same. Yeah, the overarching thing is uh, all under kind of waste management, is what we call it out here. Cool. Cool. We call it, the council need to do their job. <laughs> Maybe... Uh, Kakan says, uh, so your nipples touch the shirt? Yes, yes they do, yes. Sometimes your nipples gotta touch shirt. It's just how it happens, man. Is that like touching trow, or is that very different? Uh, no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Jeff Lefford, thank you so much for that tier one sub for ten months, man. Hi to you as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Captain Schwa also in the house. Always a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, he's our most long-standing member, right? If I remember correctly. I think he. Uh. Yes. He's up there anyway. He's I, up there. Even yeah. if he's not I can't. I can't think of anyone that's been around longer and been subscribed any longer. So. Just, just, uh, just a stand-up guy. Yeah, yeah. Since the Patreon days, nice. What a Patreon! Uh, it's so long. It's Patreon long did ago. not yeah. did not work out very well for us. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even know about Top Crack when you guys had a Patreon. Yeah, that was um, that was pretty well, pretty long. A little, little bit ago, a little bit ago. Two plus years? I guess it was right after our first year. It was right after we picked up sponsors and we're like, hey, we should try to do other things to generate revenue. So we started a Patreon. Didn't really work very well. <laughs> and hey. uh, Patreon takes a, a, a somewhat significant cut, believe it or not. Really? I didn't know that. I mean, not huge. Never... It was, I think it was like 10 or 15% or something. But it's, right. it's, I don't know, it, 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 it feels a little higher than it should. It's sizable. It's sizable. That's what she uh, said. Zacharias420 as well. He says, sup lads, and he subscribed for three months. Thank you very much, dude. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Sir Fortuna dropping in as well as Penguin droppings as well. With the bot ping already? Oh, yeah, the good. bot pinged already. Oh, wow, the bot pinged like instantly. Holy crap. Uh, it did, yeah. It went, it, it went live while I was still going and uh, getting, getting a coffee. Yeah. Uh, a real big boss. Hey, Jay, do you think Zeal Stabs will fit the JO2 plate? They absolutely do. Yeah, 100%. Of course they would. Yeah. Very nice. It will uh, support uh, stabilizers from all of your favorite vendors, whether that be C3, GMK, Zeal, Everglide, Duroc, Chinese Clones. It'll support the lot. You can take your pick. 
Yeah, I mean they're all they're all kind of designed around the same size and schematic. Yeah, they're all much for much. I do think, I think if I was going to argue it, though, I'd say Zeal were uh, overall the best, just because the QC on them is higher. I think they're, they're in terms of feel and sound, they're very very similar to the Jurok and Everglide ones. But I've had some come out of the packet in the Jurok and Everglide ones that have been broken, so the clip at the front doesn't hold the wire in. Um, so I think if I was going to it would say money, money is no object, irrespective of cost. I'd say it was Zeal, uh, Jurok, Struck, Everglide because they're identical. They're the same. And then probably C3 and then GMK. That's the order I'd go in at the minute. But GMK are going to retool. They're going to have something new coming into the Stabilizer world. So we should see what that looks like in the next weeks and months when that ever gets announced. But that is yeah. on the pad. Um, Ram has got his own Stabilizers coming as well at some point. But I think they've gone back to the drawing board on those. Those have been those have been soon TM for uh, a, a good a good yeah a good two or three years at this point. So. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. just kind of like the, uh, the the Rama HHKB replacement case, also a project that's been shelved for the last four years. I feel like I, th I thought I thought he'd said somewhere that he wasn't doing that anymore. He just uh, he, he, he might have that, he might have that's not happening. Yeah, that's that certainly could be the case. Yeah, isn't Nobauer working on one as well? I'm sure when he did that draw tease the other day and he was showing his draws off on uh, on Twitter, which were very nice draws. I must admit, I'm sure there was a HHKB case in there. Could be, could be. I mean, I, I mean, him and I have talked about HHKB replacement case, but obviously it's a lot harder to do an HHKB replacement case than it is for other token boards because those often have dedicated plates, um, whereas yes. the HHKB does not. So you have to design around that, and boy, is it much harder, and that's why we don't really see any of them. I think Zondat was doing something in that line as well. I don't know if he ever, <clears throat> if he ever finished it or ever had a prototype or anything made, but I know Zondat was looking at doing it as well. Certainly, yeah. I liked his uh, XRF though. That looks and sounds pretty nice. Yeah, it does. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Uh... Uh, Sirius says, uh, "How much do you guys like your Duck Vipers if you still have them?" Um. So I have two, but neither of them are built, and I haven't used either of them in a long, long time. They're both dismantled, and I've harvested switches out of them and put them in a box and. Hmm. I can't remember the last time I used a Viper, actually. It must be 18 months ago since I last used one. <laughs> I've never owned one, but I've built three or four of them. Um, I've used them enough. It's it's a fine board. I don't really like them personally because I don't like 11-degree typing angles. Mm -hmm. But uh, aside from that, I mean, it, it feels and sounds fine. It's a, it's a fine board. It's just not really that interesting to me. Yeah, that's true. Uh, A1A confirming that Zonda, Zonda does have one, uh, the Evidra or something. Oh, okay, so now you said that, that name reminds me of it does sound when Zonda and I met, met up in Manchester in the UK a couple of months back. He might have had something there, because mm. we did have a few boards and stuff that we talked through, so yeah. Nice, nice. All right, it is now six o'clock. So we will officially start the show. Brian, We're going to start on time, time, Jay. It's, it's 2 a.m. It's not 6 p.m. It's 2 a.m. I'm looking at the clock right now. It says 2 a.m. Right. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to roll the intro so you can't talk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's episode of Top Clack. Yes, I'm sorry that we're 27 seconds late. My apologies. But uh, with that in mind, we are going to try to keep the show nice and concise for you today, a little bit more so than usual, and uh, I hope that comes through. The news doc today, not terribly long, so uh, we should get through it in a reasonable amount of time. And of course, as we always do, we will end the show with a Q&A. So if you have questions, make sure you save them for later, and we will get to them promptly. But... Of course. Jay, how are you doing today? I'm doing really, really rather well. It's been a good week. A busy week, but a good week. So, uh, so yes, I'm feeling good, raring to go. Uh, excited that we're going to have a short show this week, because it means I'll get more sleep before I have to work tomorrow. Um, as I said, it is 2 a.m. for me right now. So, hopefully, we'll I'll get into bed before, let's say, before 4.30 a.m.? That's, nope. That's, that's kind of where I want to be getting into bed before. Five-hour show. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> we're we're going to really make a conscious effort this week to uh, to hit that two hour or less mark. So that's that's the uh, that's the goal. Um, 
I, you know what? We forgot to set up the uh, topic timer. <laughs> yeah, I was having a look at it, and I did find a really good app that would do it for us. And then I forgot to download it and install it on um, <laughs> on Streamlabs, so you don't have it available. Fantastic. All right. Typical topic. I, did the I like it. I, I did the research. I, I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. All right, guys. Uh, so... Hand by in the background. Yeah, it's somewhere up here, somewhere on the shelf up here. Yeah. Oh, you you open it and put it on the board. Have you done that with DMG yet? No, DMG still sealed. So right, okay. So before we get into the show, really, really quickly, still still sealed, never opened. Um, DMG, uh, Deep Space, um, Bento. I've never opened any of those three sets. Never opened them. What's the point of having sets if you're not going to use them, Jay? Come on. All those sets in the background, that's my unused pile. And there's two piles. There's another pile to the, the side that you can't see. Um, so there's like what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30, 31 sets. Just not in use at the minute. That's more sets than almost everyone in the community even owns, Jay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just hoard. What can I say? And I yeah. saw you looking at your watch. You you were not quick enough. <laughs> my, I don't even wear watches. I just like to look at my wrist. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> I have this weird obsession with my wrist, Jay. I have to look at it every like twenty minutes. <laughs> right. Okay. Just, just part of Whatever. who I am. Just part of who I am. Anyways. Quick announcement, guys, before we roll into the news doc. As you guys uh, might have remembered, um, about two weeks ago, we were supposed to launch the Behind the Keyboard series, but uh, there were some technical difficulties um, with my guests, so we weren't able to actually go live that day. But the wait is finally over. Tomorrow, my guests will be home and with all the proper equipment necessary, and I am ready and raring to go. So tomorrow, we'll finally have the first episode, the pilot episode of Top Clacks Behind the Keyboard. So... I know a lot of you people have been waiting for that because uh, interviews are without a doubt the most asked for thing to be uh, brought to or brought back to Top Clack. So yep. hopefully you guys will certainly enjoy that. It's going to be a good one. I'm not going to reveal who my guest is. I'm going to I'm going to keep it a secret and see how that goes. And, are you, uh, you going to give a tease? Maybe just like a a, a hint? No. No. Ooh, okay. It's just, it's just, a tiny hint. yeah, I'm, I'm going to try doing a, uh, doing it as a surprise for the first few episodes, see how people like it. If they don't like it, maybe I can switch it up. We'll see. Um, I like getting feedback from the community, so we'll wait and see for what happens there. Cool. Just to be clear, it's not me, right? I don't need to be up at this time tomorrow. Morning. It could be you. <sighs> so that, now I'm going to have to stay up anyway. That would, respect of that'd, be, sure. that'd be kind of stupid. If I just <laughs> that would be like the dumbest thing I could do, um, but it'd be kind of funny too. We should do that sometime. <laughs> Not tell anyone, of course, laugh. but uh, yeah. that'd be that'd be pretty hilarious. Or just yeah. like just have it be myself. I'll just interview myself. <laughs> how 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 egotistical would that be? What, what, what you need is you need two cameras with like a literal board between you. How you'd have to wheel yourself from one side to the other of the room to, to ask and answer your questions. That could be quite fun. Maybe. We, yeah, April Fool's Day is coming up. Maybe we can think of something stupid to do. I don't know. Cool. Regardless, let's hop right into our news doc this week. Like I mentioned, it's not terribly long, so hopefully we can get through it in a reasonable amount of time. But there are some very interesting things coming up. So Some very interesting things, yeah. Very, very. So let's move on to our first topic of the day, which is the interest check for the Austin Round 2. So if you're unfamiliar with the Austin, it is a 1800 compact layout that actually ran uh, not that many months ago, and it shipped quite recently within the last couple yeah. months, if I'm not mistaken. So they're moving very, very quickly over to a round two, and I'm just going to open up the previous group by thread so you guys can actually see the board since there's none in the interest check alone. But, uh, you know, we're not going to talk too much about it because we did talk about it fairly recently, and this is, of course, a round two, but very nice-looking 1800-style compact layout. A lot of people have been really enjoying this, and apparently it was successful enough to warrant a round two. Yeah, I think it looks good. Um, I'm glad to see it coming back. I've always had a bit of a penchant for mini 1800 style boards, and you know I think this one looks great. And uh, it's been—I haven't had a chance to see one in real life, but I've seen a lot of build streams. I think I've seen. Uh, was it I am me U I U? He built one. Um, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, so yeah, it looks like a great board. I think it'll do well back in back in group buy. Um, it's pretty quick. I don't know if Drifting Bunnies is watching. If he is, 
Uh, maybe you could tell us how long it's been since the last one ran and things like that. Um, yeah. I can't remember. Well, the, 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 previous, first one the previous group by thread for the Austin was September 2019. So, I mean, that was okay. only, what, five months ago? Yeah, so it's almost like a half yearly cycle. I think they've only just shipped, though, like a month ago. Yeah, it's, like I, I know people have been receiving them lately, but uh, it has been pretty recent. But that was only about, what, a five-month five, five month turnaround for that board? That's not bad for uh, for a group by board, honestly. So, you know, assuming they had pretty good quality control as well, I think that timeline's nice. Why not run around round two if there's enough interest? Things yeah, go well. interesting. Interesting enough, I've just found uh, in the original group by thread, the 28th of January, that was when all of them had been shipped. Uh, some international packages were still waiting to be delivered. And then the second, uh, sorry, the 1st of February, sorry, uh, invoices went out for extras. So there we go. So it's gone from Very shipping easy. to, yeah, extras being done literally two weeks ago to now being back into group by. Yeah. Yep. Not too bad. So if you missed out on that, here is your chance. Very nice. Very, very nice. Alright. Let's move on to something that hasn't actually ran before. Which is the Hex.3C. I'm not sure how that's actually supposed to be pronounced verbally, but we'll go with that. And this is a pretty, sure. this is a pretty interesting board. So, this is effectively a 60%, very standard bottom mount. Um, very interesting plate design, so just a few specs here for you. All aluminum housing, 7 degree angle. Plate options, uh, pretty standard stuff. You could vote for uh, brass, aluminum, or polycarbonate in the interest check mm -hmm. uh, form. Um, it does not come with a PCB, but it does support standard 60 uh, PCBs. Layouts still kind of being considered as far as the plate is concerned. And the run is going to have an MOQ of 50 with a max of 100. Um, so as you can see from this picture, the astute will notice that there is a bottom mount design for the plate and is going to be using O-rings, so kind of a, a play on a gasket mount, depending on how you want to look at it as well. Now, what makes this yeah. board particularly interesting is the fact that uh, they're estimating a price of one hundred to two, or sorry, one hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars rather. So, very, very uh, inexpensive, rather entry level price point. So, that makes this automatically quite interesting to me. Yeah, and I think the price is really an, an interesting point on there. That 100 to 150 dollars, we have seen it in some custom keyboards before. So I know we talked about, uh, about the show, um, so about this before the show, Brian. And we mentioned like the IDB60 that ran with not a plate, but it ran with a PCB. So plates and PCBs roughly around the same sort of price usually, and uh, and that was kind of in the same sort of ballpark figure. So boards have been done on this kind of budget before. Um, just in terms of the uh, the layouts as well, there is an update later on in the thread where he confirms there will be two plate layouts. One is uh, an ANSI plate, which will cover basic ANSI layouts, but you'll have the choice between split or full backspace, split or full right shift, and then capsule can be stepped or not. Uh, and then there's a universal plate layout as well, which gives things like uh, uh, split left shift and uh, ISO as well. So multiple different options from that perspective. Cool. Um, he also does give an update, which is just a day ago, uh, which says that they're changing factories and the proto and group buy will be delayed for a little bit. So this is very much an interest check. The timescales that have been given previously, which I think was due to start um, towards early March, is now going to be moved out a little bit whilst they change factories. But it's still coming, so we should keep an eye on it. And I think for $150, that's, that's pretty good. You know, most people have a 60% PCB lying around these days. They're very easy to pick up. You know, you can go on Canon Keys and get an AN60 for, you know, dirt cheap these days. So very, very easy to get hold of. Yeah. Um, I think the, uh, the the other interesting thing I wanted to look at as well is the actual plate design too. So we've seen a lot about leaf springs and having relief cuts made into, cut into the plates to provide more flex, soft feelings and that kind of stuff. This kind of has got an attempt on that in just the corners and around the screw points. So to alleviate some of the uh, the, the strength of, of the plate around the screws, there there is kind of relief cuts now. So that should make a softer feeling, especially around things like the space bar. Um, so instead of the space bar being firm and thocky and overly harsh, this may soften it just a little bit. I'm almost wondering if those relief cuts don't go far enough, given that that plate looks like it's uh, brass in that particular image. But I suspect in the polycarbonate version of the plate, it would be very soft. So it would be uh, probably quite nice. 
yeah, certainly. I think the relief cuts definitely help a lot with um, sound and consistency overall, even on the metal plates. <laughs> but you don't really get any additional flex on them, let's be honest. If you're using a metal plate sure. like brass or steel or even aluminum, you're really not going to get any flexing because metal doesn't like really do that. You get a little very, very minor uh, flex from the impact, but it's not perceivable in the same way it would be on, let's say... Um, you know, a palm plate or a polycarbonate plate or a PCB mount board like the IDB60 where you can actually generate insane amounts of flex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think for me, this one definitely want to see a prototype. Um, but if they can keep that price to $100, $150, that kind of area, that's that's pretty good. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the board itself is not terribly interesting. All right, you have bottom mount, you have O-rings there. That's not bad. The plate looks pretty reasonable. It has the <coughs> relief cuts. You have a seamless design on the case. Um, there's nothing really fancy going on here, but for that price, it just oozes value. And I really hope they can hit that price point because especially if they get yeah. this closer to 100, can you imagine how many you could sell? Yeah, and uh, they, they want to limit it to 100, but uh, 100 units. But For the I first run. Agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think my my view is that we have a lot of top end boards, and we have a lot of low end boards in like the the you know the big things like uh, Ducky uh, and Pros that kind of stuff. Those boards sell like hotcakes. They sell hundreds of thousands of them. Um, we don't have anything really in that middle range that does volume. We've had things in the past like Polaris and uh, GSKT actually was kind of in that price range as well. It wasn't too expensive. It was like two hundred and fifty or something like that. But we haven't had anything that's kind of like the 100, 125, 150 kind of price range for pretty much everything uh, that's that's easily accessible and offers a lot of new features such as, you know, what we're trying to do with O-rings and gaskets and all of that kind of stuff. But I'd almost argue that, that we have a, a niche in the hobby where we don't need any fancy frills. We want a no frills board that gives us everything we, not, we want with a really comfortable typing experience. And this might be that board. I completely agree. I mean, like you mentioned, we have we have tons of the high end stuff. It's not, and we talked about it, you know, at length on shows before. It's like so many people can design all these crazy, super feature, top tier boards, but they're going to be expensive. I mean, when you're yeah. not when you're not considering cost, you know, the design opens up a lot. But when you're really trying to get this sub two hundred dollar price point, you got to do a lot to actually get there. Um, yeah, and it's it's always kind of cool because now we're gonna have a board like this that can compete with something like uh, the KBD fans tofu because it's gonna be in a yeah. very similar price bracket, but this is going to seemingly be you know maybe a little bit higher end because you do have that uh, that nice O ring mounted plate with the relief cuts and you do have that seamless design and stuff like that. So this is looking pretty nice. It doesn't look interesting, but it looks really good for the price. And it's no that's frills, cool. right? Yeah. It's no frills. Uh, interesting. One th final thing I've noticed. I'm not sure if this is a mistake on the uh, the KLEs or if it's actually how it's going to be. But if you do want that Sangan bottom row, which is shown in the original image, you have to go for the universal plate file. Uh, the ANSI plate only offers a standard 6.25U space row, unless there's just not showing the options on there. But that's quite interesting to know. Yeah, that is a good catch too. That could that could potentially fool a lot of people. Um, yeah. Yeah, and according to this, at least, they are going to have um, all three tops available. So regardless of whether you want HHKB, WinKeyless, or Standard, you should uh, you should have that option, which is also super awesome. So yeah, looking yeah. forward to this. Yeah. If they can hit that target price point, I'm in, for sure. Absolutely going to get one of these, because it's it's so cheap, you, you almost can't say no just to try it out, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, if, the, if this is that cheap, I will definitely pick up one, and we'll definitely try it out on stream and we'll, we'll have a couple of build streams probably because uh, at that point i think you'll probably grab, try and grab one as well just to try it if nothing yeah. else um the other thing as well is big thumbs up to the uh, the vendor because they've said plate files will be available as well so excellent always good to see that yep big thumbs cool. up there uh speaking of thumbs up quick thumbs up to talisman solutions who donated 1111 bits earlier thank you so much man and to skewed who just resubscribed for tier two on that two months, uh, or on that 12 months, rather, sorry. So thank you so much, guys. Appreciate that. And to Frothy KK with a tier one sub for nine months. Appreciate it, guys. Wow, so Frothy KK now has a top crack baby. That's right. Nine months. Hit that nine month yeah. mark. Yep. We, yeah, you've, uh, you've, you've had top clacks baby. Take that however you will. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. Definitely want to check that out once it does hit the group by phase. Color me interested. Let's move on awesome. to our next topic here, which uh, is an interest check for the 
PIM43, I think is how mm. it's supposed to be said. Uh, P-I-M standing for PCB Isolation Mount, 43 referring to uh, the amount of keys used, or the at least the rough amount of keys used, because there's obviously different tops um, to yep. choose from here. So anyways, uh, not a whole lot of info on this board, sadly, but we do have some pretty cool renders to show off. Some things to take note of. Obviously, this is a 40 or 45-ish eh, percent board, depending on how you want to look at it. Percentages are stupid. The enclosure is going to be plastic because he really wants to kind of enforce that portability and, uh, you know, just being able to travel with your 40%. This isn't one of those super high-end, you know, 14-pound 40% that has a huge brass bottom and chunky bezels and, like, no layout. Uh, this is quite the opposite. So to, to me, this is much more in the spirit of what I think when I think of 40% boards and things in that uh, that kind of realm. So sure. I, I kind of like this. I like the idea for the plastic housing. Um, Agree. And I like the idea of having it be kind of an isolation PCB mount as well. So this the typing experience here is going to be very similar to something like the IDB60. That's what they're going for. There's no plate, mm -hmm. but you do have uh, some kind of O-rings there to uh, soften the blow as well as give you a little bit of flexibility on that PCB mount. Yeah, it's actually slightly different to the IDB60 because the IDB60 doesn't have anything pressing the plate down on the top. It's just O-rings underneath the PCB, uh, whereas this has got O-rings above and below and the top case does compress it. So it's slightly different. Um, yeah. I know that's just a you know, a, a semantics thing more than anything. But what I do really like about this, that it's 40% that uses a dot board. How cool is that? It's got a little dot board in there. It's got a you know separate USB. I'm a big fan of that. Um, I think the renders for this look really, really great as well. So, I, I agree. And I, I kind of like the idea of uh, the daughter board here. So th they're using the daughter board, so you actually get additional flex on the PCB. You don't have to worry about a center mount port. Um, yeah. If the PCB flex is too much, which, you know, similar to the IDB60, like we've seen, can flex an insane amount, like really, really serious levels of flex. Here, you're probably not going to get quite that much just because it is a smaller PCB, obviously. Um, yeah. That's just science. But, uh, you know, without the plate, you should still get a little bit of flex here. Yeah, one of the interesting things on the IDB60 is that when you type on it, the, you see the cable out of the back go like this because yep. it's flopping yep. up and down. <laughs> you, you won't get that on this board. It will be a nice, stable one cable stable cable there you go yeah certainly i like that implementation though i, I think that's pretty smart to use the daughter board when you're going for something that could potentially flex as much as this and yeah uh, again, I, I, I like it yeah i like the plastic enclosure idea as well uh, what do you think mm -hmm. about the uh the top options though taking a look at this first picture here obviously you have something that's more akin to a standard layout no blockers then you have one that has a singular bottom left blocker which we have seen before on uh, mm -hmm. the think 6.5 uh, if I remember correctly, I really, really, really disliked it on that, and I really, really, really dislike it here as well. Oh, really? See, yeah. the, the one other thing, it was, I think it was only 0.5 use. It, wasn't it was so switch. ugly. It was so ugly. It, I'm sorry. I agree, it was bad. I, I, I agree on the think it was ugly. I didn't like it on there at all, but I actually kind of like it on this. I think it's a smaller form factor board. I think it works. A um, couple of things on the layout for this one. I really like the fact that you get arrows. Personally, if I was going to pick one of these, I would pick the one with the blocker just at the side of the arrows. I like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I think the layout's fine. It works really well. Uh, big shout out to 159 as well. Thank you very much for the 1,000 bits, good sir. Very much appreciate those. Thank you, dude. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Always appreciate that. Um, I, I agree. I, I kind of like the blocker next to um, the arrow cluster. I do think that that always looks nicer. Um, but, I mean, on a board this size, I feel like blockers, you know, we've had this conversation before. Um, I think extra keys in place of blockers generally makes more sense on a board this size, but hey, that's just my opinion. Uh, regardless, yeah, I think the, the board overall does look pretty nice. I think we could probably all agree on that, right? So, very, very nice there. But yeah, we don't really have much uh, more info, sadly. I was hoping for a little bit more info in the thread, but all we get are some, uh, some nice renders. And that's going to have to be good enough Good enough for now. All right. Sounds good. Yep, we'll check that out again in the group by phase. Moving right along. Another interest check. We actually have a lot of keyboards this week. A lot of, a lot of keyboards and interest more, more checks. Key, more keyboards than, uh, than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is very, very abnormal. Anyways, interest check for the Sakura 660. And this one is by uh, by Fropsy, who's a very nice <laughs> lad that hangs out in the, uh, the top clack server. And this is his next design. Obviously, he is also the designer of the Godspeed 75, which is currently running on TKC. But this is his uh, his next project. 66 key layout here. Yeah. 
So just uh, just a few a few specs before we talk about how we feel on it. It's going to use a five degree angle. It is going to be top mounted. The default plate will be copper. Um, carbon fiber plate will be uh, an extra option as well as Alps copper plate, which is a nice touch. Weight's also going to be copper. Uh, PCB will support MX and uh, in Alps, of course, since Alps plate is um, one of the options. That's going to be designed by Heine. Um, there's going to yeah. be, uh, the, the overall build weight, well, I'm assuming this is fully built weight, is going to be about 2.6 kilograms, which is about 5.7 pounds, and there's going to mm -hmm. be a 45 unit cap on it, and it, apparently it's going to come with a carrying case as well. Um, what, what do you, uh, I, I'd like to ask your opinion, but obviously, if I'm not mistaken, you're the one running this board, right? I'm, I'm doing fulfillment for Fropsy, so Fropsy's okay. doing, it's just fulfillment, it's okay. from, from my perspective, so Fropsy's doing, uh, he's arranging all of the uh, machining and everything else, which usually that would be up to the vendor, so he's doing all of that, he's doing out with Heine, and they're having very good chats around the PCB, uh, I'm literally just doing fulfillment, so it'll be payment processing, getting the getting the boards, boxing them and shipping them off, sure. um, so yeah, so I, I, I will refrain from giving anything overly opinionated on this, uh, but I will say that uh, there's a lot of work going on to support this in the background. That's okay. I can uh, I can still give opinions on it because I am not part yeah. of this. Um, yeah, so the... it would be fair of me to, to, to influence you in that respect. But yeah, yeah. go for it. There, there, are, there are quite a few things I like about this, actually. So I like the color options a lot. You're going to get lilac, e-white, and nightshade as your color options. And uh, I, judging by the renders at the very least, I quite like all of the color options available. Um, it is going to be manufactured by Salvin, which is really cool, too. We've been seeing a lot of high-end stuff coming out from him lately. His quality is about as good as it gets. His QC, fantastic. If things have finishing issues, he doesn't let it leave the factory. The guy is passionate, and he's on point, and I like that a lot. Yeah. When, uh, whilst I won't talk about the board, one thing I will talk about with Salvin, he's just a genuine nice guy. Uh, and the other thing as well is it's really good because people get to see the boards being made. He's really open with his Instagram. Um, I don't know if you ever look on, on Instagram at his stuff, oh, yeah. uh, Brian, but uh, you, you know, every time he's got a board that's going through group buy, you can watch the board being production and he'll show when there's been mistakes and problems with his machining processes. He's really open with that. And then you, you get to see the whole production methodology if you just keep watching out there. So it's really, really interesting from that perspective um but yeah uh, salvin great guy hands up one of the best in the community uh, and it's just it, it's it offers really interesting insight into how boards are actually made and manufactured and what that process looks like end to end so yeah yeah absolutely so um as far as aesthetics are concerned i actually think this board looks pretty good i don't think it looks terribly unique there's not a whole lot of interesting things going on but i think the design is still clean it's still elegant it's still very very nice the um the top actually because of these huge bezels kind of almost give me a volcano vibe which i i appreciate a lot i like big bezels on 660 layouts i don't know why but i cannot lie so i like that quite a bit the weight design pretty nice i think i prefer the weight design a little bit more on his godspeed 75 to be honest um, this mm -hmm. one looks a little bit more mundane, but that's okay. Definitely nothing wrong. It's a nice looking board. I'll leave it at that. Cool. Excellent. So yeah, have to check this out. Um, one thing I did find actually kind of interesting is normally, obviously, with GMK sets and and the, the like, we get uh, you know custom artisans from Rama or Salvin. You always get cable collaborations, desk pads, etc. The lot here. It's a keyboard that has keycaps and desk pads, which I thought was kind of interesting. We don't see that quite as often, but uh, obviously. Yeah, Fro Fro is, I, th I, th I think, and I'm speaking for Fropsy here, but I think he uh, he just wants to make it all a whole end-to-end -end experience rather than just give people a keyboard. He wants to give people a, a true experience. So, you know, to really live the theme, he wants to, to, to see how far we can go with desk pads and caps. Yeah, so. and, I, and I like that. And sure, I mean, the board already is being manufactured by Salvin anyways. What's some caps made by the same guy at that point? So nice, uh, nice convenient option there. Desk pad. I always think it's kind of strange to have a desk pad with a board, but I like the idea anyways. And this one looks nice. It's simple. It's clean. No matter where you put your keyboard and mouse, you're not going to cover up a whole lot on this. A little bit of the mountain there, unfortunately. But uh, otherwise, not too shabby. I like where this is going. I want to see a price. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> yep, because I mean, if uh, if we're talking about a forty-five unit cap, we're obviously not going to get a super low price because we don't have a yeah. you know an unlimited amount of uh, units. But uh, it, it you know the, the potential's there. Yeah, uh, plate, plate design. Totally plate design also. I like the plate design quite a bit on this. I totally forgot about that. So mm -hmm. yeah, lots of uh, lots of relief cuts in that plate as well. Yeah. Yep. 
Cool. So we'll have to wait and see uh, for more information on the group buy. Cool. All right. Speaking of something that is, uh, well, I guess it's not currently in group buy, but it's about to be in group buy, and that's why we're talking about it now, because it has a limited amount of units, uh, is the Canone. That's how it's pronounced, right? Uh, Canon? Yes, Canone? it is. Canone? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or, or the con as someone said to me the other day in voice chat the con one um uh, but yeah the, the canon yeah it's not a con guys the canon um yeah I, I, thought, I, I thought the con con one was that's best, uh, that's I, I gotta be honest that's uh that's pretty fantastic anyways the uh the con one or canon is uh, a board that a lot of people have been waiting on we checked it out in interest check not too long ago actually um, and it's looking yeah. pretty good here as well. So 6,000 series aluminum housing, a 5-degree angle, USB-C PCB that presumably supports QMK, but I didn't actually find that in the information. It does. It does support okay. QMK. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. And then uh, there's some interesting things going on with this keyboard as well. So the case is actually held together via five magnet mounting points, which I thought yep. was quite interesting. The plate, uh, unfortunately, is not held in by magnets, though I would like to see that. Um, if someone wants to get ambitious enough. The plate is going to be bottom mounted and you're going to have four options for your uh, fixed or well, I guess semi-fixed plate here. So you're going to have a, a 6.25 bottom row on Z layout, a 7U bottom row on Z layout, and then you're also going to have a 6.25 and 7U bottom row options in ISO. So four plate options there, um, making it pretty easy for pretty much everyone to get in on this. Um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty interesting looking board. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I, I, I like the design cues. I think when we talked about this in interest check, I did say that I would prefer to see it as a sixty percent. I think that that just whole symmetrical look would work better for me on a sixty rather than sixty five. And the and this is just me being selfish. The literal reason for that is because I like a blocker on a sixty five. I don't like an open a full bottom row on a sixty five percent. So that's just just me being fussy on that particular thing. Um, the the prototypes look good. Uh, again, it's been manufactured by Salvin, so you know we've just talked about how good Salvin is and all of that kind of stuff. And again, it's been all over his Instagram. Um, there's a couple of things that interest me as well. So right back in the original grid by thread, the uh, the guy behind this, uh, which is called Kind of Keyboards, I think his name is Milo, actually. I was talking to him a while back. Um, he mentioned that the board had been designed with aesthetics in, uh, sorry, ergonomics in mind, uh, and that he had a bit of a write-up and a document as to why he'd uh, chosen the angles and everything else. Now, I don't think that's ever come out. I don't think he's actually released that as yet, but I'd be really interested to have a read-through of that document prior to the group by um in terms of the board itself i, I think that the design is very really interesting it's very unique it's very different to anything we've seen before i like the fact that it's using a daughter board i like the fact that you're using martin for the pcbs because martin's great at pcbs um the couple of things that concern me is one it's bottom mount not always a big fan of bottom mount. I much prefer top. If you're going to go for the direct screw methods, I prefer top mount. Uh, the magnets are really cool. I think that's a, a really great feature. Um, a, you know, holding boards together. You, you, you know me, Brian, magnetic pen rails and God knows what else. If I can put <laughs> magnets in something, I'm all over it. Um, so I'm really interested to see how that works. There was actually a video that he released on Instagram the other day which showed him dropping it in and it just dropping the top onto the magnets and it was kind of like a nice thunk. Uh, and apparently there's a special mechanism that allows you to remove the top from the magnets. I assume that's just kind of a slot from the back where you can open it up somehow uh, without you having to take keycaps off because trying to separate the two parts, I imagine, would be quite difficult with the keycaps on. Uh, but I do wish it was top mount. I think that's the only thing I'd want to change on this board um, is, is to make it top mount. Yeah, and I mean, there's not any real reason, at least I don't, I can't find any real reason why it can't be top mount as well. I think bottom mount was obviously just a, a choice there. Um, a couple things to, to consider, though. This this is going to have a 90-unit um, cap, so a fair amount of units, but not a ridiculous amount. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this, so uh, that's something to consider. This does open in two days and only 90 units, so if you do want it, make sure you get on it soon because we've been seeing so many keyboards sell out within minutes. I mean, just look at the uh, the JO2, remember the other day when, uh, yeah. when, when I said it was going to sell out in two minutes, and guess what happened? <laughs> You, you were you were right. Yeah, sold out I, I two said, minutes. Nah, it's not going to be two minutes. I actually expected like a day, but no, you were right. Two, you you were literally spot on with your your prediction. Um, I think when, you, when I was looking through the chat, I think you said it'd be about two and a half minutes, and it was yeah. you were seven seconds out when it came to it. So, you know, uh, I was really impressed uh, by that. But um, yeah, I think this 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 looks good. It's probably going to have um, a, a fair bit of. 
uh, take up behind it. So we'll, I'll, I'll be interested to see. And in fact, I think I've just worked out what the mechanism for opening it is. There's a render of the base of the board in blue or like a grayish blue color. Um, and you can see right where the USB port is that there is um, uh, like a little hole that you can press. It's quite far down in the interest check. Um, I suspect that there's going to be, uh, you just get a screwdriver or something and push the top up from there. Uh, and that will be the mechanism to release it. It's kind of like right in the middle. So, which makes sense because pulling magnets apart is quite difficult. So if you've got something yeah. to leverage against, that, that would make much more sense. Um, but yeah, I think this looks great. I want to get my hands on a unit and try it out and, and see what it's actually like. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting from a design perspective. Yeah. You know, thing... All the right thing. Go for it. One thing I like quite a bit, and, and some of these pictures really show it off, um, is just how high profile this case is on the sides. It looks like it almost yeah. sc it scales when, when you when you go up towards the top row. It's almost like it covers just more and more. Like it does. It, it, and when you it get does. to that top row, let me try to find um, one of the pictures I was looking at earlier. You can kind of tell looking at it from the top. Oh, here's a good one. Just how deep, look how recessed that top row is. And obviously the top row, that's the tallest row for Cherry Profile, um, which I, I presume this is. So, I mean, look how look how much that covers. I love that. I think that's a really, really nice and unique aesthetic. And, yeah, it, it is really cool. It's, it's I, fantastic. I but I, I, yeah. I also love how the bottom isn't like that. So obviously, um, sometimes on, on cases that try to pull off something like this, the bottom is actually raised a little too high. And when you hit um, mm -hmm. spacebar, especially if you're like me and you flip your spacebar, you wind up just hitting the case the entire time as well. So I'm glad they didn't do that here. I think the uh, the design is, is more or less a success here. I think it's visually quite nice. I agree with you that a 60% might be a little bit better for this type of style. Uh, again, that's just uh, my opinion as well. So, but yeah, overall, yeah. pretty happy with uh, the way this is looking. Um, something to consider though is the price. So this is not going to be cheap. It is launching at four hundred and ten euro, which uh, is about four hundred and forty-four US dollars. So this is not a cheap keyboard. Yeah, and it is shipping from the EU as well, guys. So uh, do remember from that this doesn't have vendors. It's 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 just kind of keyboards running it themselves. Um, so you do need to bear that in mind. So I think the the price isn't excessive, but it, it's up there, so it's worth bearing that in mind. But you have to remember that for this type of design, there is a lot of machining to get into those angles. So this is probably more based on the actual physical cost of the units than than anything else. Yeah. Um, so you, you just need to keep that in mind. Just going back to your your comment about the uh, the caps getting deeper as you go up the profiles. Um, I absolutely agree. I think it looks great on this particular board. There's only one other board that I've ever used that's done that, and that was the Doppelganger from Noah and uh, Cable Car Designs. Um, so that does exactly the same. It gets deeper as it goes higher. So yeah, it's good to see yeah. that other people are doing that too. Yeah, it's a really cool feature. I, I wish I wish that we saw it more. To be totally honest. Um, all right. Yeah. So uh, last thing to talk about, I guess, would be the color options here, which there are a few. So uh, my personal favorite is this trapped blue. I think that just looks absolutely fantastic. Then there's this uh, what they're calling shady green, which is also quite nice. Mm -hmm. There's a deep black, all right, nothing uh, terribly new or exciting there, and a Stormtrooper white, uh, which I believe is an E-coding. Um, uh, well, okay, so this is interesting. I asked in the Discord. They said what, their, their exact words. Let me let me get this up because it's, it was quite interesting. Uh, they just on their Discord. Um, let me get the exact words. Sorry, I, I should have uh, thought about this beforehand. That's all good. So... So they said, uh, the coating that we're p putting up really is the best in the industry, so no reason to worry about that. And I said, does that mean it's electrophoresis or Cerakote? Or, so Eco or Cerakote? And I never got a response, so I don't know. Mm. But apparently... Does, does Salvin offer both? The best in the industry. Um, so Salvin can offer both, I believe. He can he can outsource the coatings to, uh, to another factory from watching sure. his Insta stories. So, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I haven't reached out to Salvin and asked, but... Uh, uh, kind of keyboards didn't respond to me when I asked specifically which cards you <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not going to be something like anodization because you can't anodize, anodize um, this particular color uh, or no, shade no. of white, it's, rather. It's, it always it's comes out silver. So. It's, it's either some form of powder coat or e-coat or uh, cerakote, which are all three actually paint apply application methodologies. So they're very similar actually in terms of how they're done, but um, we're digressing. Uh, thank you very much, Scrubby Sean, for all of the... Uh, uh, all 69 of the plus 26. 
Okay, right. I, couldn't, I didn't know how many it was. Yeah, uh, he says, "Take more of my money." Thank you very much, dude. So really much. Uh, yeah, C- coming up, coming up on a hundred bits there. Getting, getting close. So thank you so much, Sean. Appreciate that, man. All right. Cool. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the canon group. I goes live in two days at two p.m. Eastern, which is eleven Pacific, or t- uh, seven UK time. If I got that math right yes. there, I think that's about right. Yeah, 7 p.m. UK time, yep. Yep, and only, again, only 90 units available, guys. So a lot of people have been after this one, so if you want it, make sure you're in there early. That's why we like to cover Absolutely. group buys that uh, haven't quite gone live yet that have small unit caps. Speaking of group buys with small unit caps, jumping over to our next board, this is the Flex Virgo, and it's one that we've seen before on the show. We talked about it a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, this is... A, a TKL version of the Alice style layout. So this is kind of uh, um, the, the the whole ergonomic kind of uh, design, um, which is really really interesting. So a couple of specs before we get into the, the details of the design and talk a bit more about that because it is quite an interesting board. At uh, seven degree angle, the split between the two halves of the board is twelve degrees, which is almost identical to the original Microsoft Natural Ergonomic Four Thousand, which is what this is based off. So those old Microsoft uh, ergonomic boards. The PCB supports QMK and VIA and uses a USB-C daughter board as well, which is great to see. We've seen it on pretty much all of the boards we talked about today. Uh, aluminium plate, but carbon fiber, brass, and FR4 are available as extras. So if you buy a kit, you will get the uh, the aluminium plate as standard, and you'll have to buy another plate at the top. It's about 3.5 kilograms built up, which is almost 8 pounds. It's a heavy unit. It's a big old heavy unit uh, with that big brass weight and the whole size of it. Yeah, it's a heavy unit. And there is 50 units available. Now, those 50 units are split into two different sections. The first 10 will be first come, first serve. So the first 10 people to fill out the form will get a first come, a first served unit. And the rest, or the remaining 40 of those units will be raffled off to the remaining entrants. So uh, you may or may not be lucky when it comes to that perspective. In terms of layout, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. So it offers uh, uh, ISO, it offers uh, ANSI. It's it's got all sorts of different split space bar options on there. You can split both the right and the left shifts. You can do split backspace. You can do step caps lock. Lots of different options there. So most people should be relatively comfortable with uh, with those layouts. Also it offers the two different B keys as well. So uh, on I think on the KLE it's marked as an FN key, but you can have two B keys if you would really like as well. Um, so yeah. What do you think of this one, Brian? Uh, it, I'm not entirely sold on it, but I kind of like where it's going. So it, it it's kind of reminiscent to the LZ Ergo in terms of mm, uh, you know, aesthetic and layout, uh, which I do appreciate. I think it's a pretty nice looking board. Um, I I don't know. I I'm interested in it, but uh, I also just recently bought the Tengu, so I'm a little less interested in this now because I prefer the uh, smaller, closer to sixty percent uh, ergonomic style, I guess. Uh, sure. Whereas this is obviously a, a TKL, but I, I kind of like the idea of him pulling it um, the the, uh, the the split and stuff from the Microsoft Natural Ergonomic Four Thousand because that's not a mechanical keyboard, obviously, but it's it's a very influential keyboard throughout history. A lot of yeah. a lot of people use that back in the day. A lot of office workers, um, it was super super popular, and uh, you know for ergonomic reasons. And it's kind of nice to kind of bring that kind of stuff to our more modern. Um, keyboard community so i definitely appreciate that it looks fine it looks nice the gasket mounting system is is pretty interesting so it's effectively i i assume that this will effectively feel kind of the same as um the pour on strip method something like key cult uh this approaches it a little bit differently though so if you kind of see it's hard in this picture but you can kind of see these little um I don't know if these are porn or actually, but these little um, strips that uh, cover these tabs on the plate. So instead of having one in below and one above, you have this kind of sleeve that fits over the tab on the plate itself. And then, uh, and then that goes down and, and the top closes on it. So I, it's kind of effectively the same means, which should be pretty effective. But it's kind yeah. of a, diff- a slightly different take on it. And it's kind of nice. It's kind of professional looking. <clears throat> yeah, it looks really great, and um, I, I've actually been talking to Flex about this because I think it might be a viable alternative to my three-layer gasket solutions for the J-Series boards going forward. So you get above, below, and you also get around the edges of the plate as well. It looks really, really good. So I'm interested in it from that perspective. Uh, the, the other thing I wanted to say as well is in terms of the design, it, well, you're absolutely right, it's like the old LZ uh, uh, Go boards, but those Microsoft boards are so commonplace, even in the office today. If I go into, and I work for a big company, but if I go in there now, even now, 25 
five years after those boards came out, they're still really, really easy to find on people's desks. So to have something like this in the custom environment, I think is absolutely a winner. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the price for a second because this is not a cheap board. Um, the base no. price is $560 before shipping and before um, associated fees as well. So you're really looking at well over $600 um, just to kind of get this board started. Yeah, and uh, that is not cheap, and that's with the included aluminum plate. Obviously, there's uh, there's other plates that you can buy as well, but uh, that's going to cost you a little bit extra. Yeah, there's also a special edition brass base, which will be open for five people randomly. So if you fill out the form and you want a brass base, uh, you may or may not get one. If you're one of the lucky five, that's an extra hundred and thirty dollars for an entire brass base. That's the whole base made out of brass, um, which is you know expensive. But uh, if you like brass, which I know some people do. Uh, that may be well worth considering. Um, just a couple of thoughts on the price. I think the reason why it's so high is, one, because the MOQ is, uh, is, is, well, the actual volume of units available is quite low as well. The more units you do, the lower the prices become. Uh, secondly, there's a lot of material in that board. It's, you know, eight pounds. It's a heavy piece of bit uh, of, of kit. There's a lot of machining to do there. There's a lot of tight angles. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting to do. You know, most manufacturers are gonna are, are gonna add a premium just because of the sheer volume of work that they have to do to get this right. So I know he's had prototypes made; they look really good. I'm really interested to see how that goes. Uh, his Discord server is getting a lot of activity at the minute to talk about this as well. So I think it's got a, a, a fair bit of uh, a cult following behind it. I think it looks great. I definitely want to try and pick one of these up. I'll be filling out the form with the rest of you guys. Uh, to try and get hold of one of these, um, and Nathan Kim built one recently, and he he was really impressed with it as well. So he was uh, he was really impressed with it. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, that uh, that particular mounting system actually seems pretty effective. I'd love to try it. Um, again, as far as the price is concerned, I totally agree. It, it's a lot of money, but that doesn't make it bad value because there no. is so much going into that. And there obviously is a very big uh, disconnect between that. So just because something costs a lot of money doesn't necessarily make it not worth it. And that's certainly something to always keep in mind in this hobby because they don't always cross. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so the form's going to be open for a minimum of 24 hours. It'll be open as long as it needs to do to hit MOQ. Um, and uh, I think he did say his factory's not open until the 17th, which seems pretty standard for most factories at the moment. So uh, the, you know, the group is running it around the sprite sort of time to make sure that once the factory's back open, he can get his order in. So it, it all looks good from that perspective too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. So like, I like, like you mentioned, only 50 units here. So not a particularly big run. Those could sell out within minutes. So be ready for this. Also, it is worth noting that the first 10 spots will be allocated via first come, first serve for the first 10 people that fill out the form. And the remaining 40 boards are going to be uh, raffled via RNG for the remaining people that filled out the form. So if you're really quick on your feet and you're one of those first 10 people, easy peasy, you're going to get one. Um, otherwise, you're going to be uh, part of the RNG raffle after that. So, pretty cool way of doing. It. I actually like that way of, of running it. It it kind of uh, it kind of is a nice balance, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't think there's. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, I think there's there's a, probably a big debate that we need to have around raffles and first come sure. first serve versus RNG. Uh, it's probably not not for today, but nope. uh, I agree <laughs> that you know small unit runs where it's just first come first serve can be really difficult for people, uh, and even large unit runs can be really difficult people depending on the board so you know it, it is something that we need to work towards uh, fixing as a community and whether this is the right or wrong method to do that well it might tell us a little bit more after the group by runs so if this has got enough demand behind it we might see whether this is an effective method or not yep absolutely cool so there you go that group by does go live on um, the 15th just like the canone both go live the same day and uh, this one actually has a bunch of time zones listed so there you go there's your time zones Make yep. sure you get on those while you can. All right, but moving out of the realm of keyboard and over to the realm of key set, let's check out a couple that have gone up recently. This is the interest mm -hmm. check for Cat Arctic, which is pretty interesting. So Arctic is a colorway that we have seen before. It is run by McNoss, and uh, last time we saw it was in the JTK um, uh, version, which was, uh, oh cool, he has it here. 2018 is when that launched, and he even has a picture of it there. Uh, well, that's a huge picture. Holy crap! Let's go ahead and uh, and Gosh. not let's let's go ahead and not expand that picture ever again. 
But uh, <laughs> anyways, so bam, there you go. That's what uh, JTK Arctic looks like. It was relatively successful, but you know, JTK, a lot of people have issues with JTK because of their inconsistencies. A lot of people like them because they're, uh, you know, somewhat accessible and incredibly inexpensive compared to other options. Regardless, that doesn't matter because this is going to be a set ran in cat profile, uh, which is fantastic. Jay and I very much love that profile. And uh, you can yep. do a lot of cool things with it because um, obviously Kirita does um, differently with MOQs, so you uh, you have a lot more options with Cat, and it is generally speaking quite a bit cheaper as well. So very nice. He has um, he actually has some prototype samples here. So these are not renders; these are actual pictures of uh, the first round of samples that he's gotten. He's not a hundred percent happy with these colors. So uh, I think he's going to be getting some new samples. But regardless, here are some renders to look at to see what it's supposed to look like. And I think and it looks know, pretty nice. That's really good it's that really he's got good. those, uh, those um, uh, you know, the sample caps already. So he's got them in the profile, in an attempt to get the colors, the first stab at the colors. Normally with the likes of GMK, we only see the samples after the group buys run and people go, oh, here's a handful of samples. I've got five key caps that, you know, blanks that kind of match the colors. Here's it next to the Pantone chips or the Ral chips or whatever else, you know. Here he's actually got a full set. He's kitted out a keyboard with all of those keys. Uh, and I have quite a nice keyboard of that. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, it really helps visualizing. You can take that, you can see, okay, so that's how the profile's going to look. I know what the colors look like from the uh, original JTK one. I've just made the mistake of opening that picture and now I can't scroll anywhere. Um, <laughs> <coughs> uh, you, know, you know, so it really, really helps to set in your mind what's this set actually going to look like. And then those uh, renders by Manzal, as you were just about to jump onto. Um, they really help you to, to visualize what this is going to be. So I'm really, really happy that this interaction check come along. It's kind of done things in a little bit of a different way, and it's got a full prototype set as well. So I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, I, I actually really like um, McNoss as a key set designer particularly because I think he does a really good job with his sets of owning a theme but not shoving it down your throat. And I feel like it's the same here. When you look at this set, it doesn't necessarily scream Arctic, but... When you know about it, the theme really starts to make sense, but it's not too in your face. And I appreciate that a lot. It fits really, really well. And I felt the same way about Fuyu and Arctic the last time. And uh, one thing that's cool about here is because he's using Cat, it opens up a lot more options for keys. And uh, because of that, you can see that he has uh, alternative modifiers and alternative alphas in this. So you kind of have your choice to go about this set in multiple styles. But I got to be honest, I like that much more classic look just like he had in the uh, the JTK run. Yeah, see, I, I kind of lean in towards doing the, uh, the the white modifiers with the white alphas, if I was going to pick. That's clean. Um, it's very the, clean. The, 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 the snowman, which is a good name for a kit, actually, the snowman kit, that's that's probably where I'd lean to. Um, I think it looks really nice, especially on a light-colored board. Perhaps if I got a, a white canone, that would look, uh, look quite nice. Ooh, Who knows? That would be nice. I'd, oh man, I'd love to see cat profile on the canone just to see how that um, that, that side scale profile, right? that side profile scale works. Yeah, that could yeah. be really interesting. Someone render that for me, please. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, it's easy, right? Just go render. Just, go, just, just go, go render. Go it's go easy, render. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how ignorant, and stupid I sound all the time. Don't worry, Jay. <laughs> um, anyways, there's not really a whole lot to talk about on the kits because, um, like I mentioned, it's a cat set. So if there's something you, you need, everything. chances are it's covered. There's really no point in talking about cat kits anymore, just because every cat set offers everything. Um, yeah, you don't really have to worry about it. So. <laughs> In interesting, there's more than what's displayed here as well, because it says Icon Mods, French, Norda, North, South, Kovrak are all in the works uh, and will be offered, so please try to refrain from asking for those in the thread. <laughs> so you can already see that the, this this is uh, it's going to be the standard cat. I mean, maybe not to the levels that we saw with Oasis, but I think, did we count? There's 27 kits, I think, last week, something like that. So there might not be as many for this one, but you're going to be able to get pretty much every key you want with multiple different variations of alphas and modifiers and everything else included as well. And, so it's really, really good to see. Yeah, and if it's been if it's going to be similar price-wise to a lot of the cat sets that we've been seeing lately in Group Buy, you can expect to be able to pick up alphas and modifiers for under 100 bucks. And that'll fit a lot of boards, and I like that quite a bit. That's a that's a very attractive yeah. price point to be able to outfit a you know most of your boards for sub one hundred dollars, especially for unorthodox users. So so people like who use Ergodox and things like that, you can just really kit out a set because you can pick the alphas and you don't need to buy a base kit and then the Ergodox set like you do with other um, like if uh, if 
you know, when I think when Space Cadet Rad was, um, I can't remember what they call the kits now, but they have a special name for them, don't they? I can't remember what Oblotsky usually calls them, uh, but where he does all the Ergo keys and everything else, but you have to buy a base kit and then the Ergo kit as well, and it becomes really, really expensive. Here in Cat, you can just buy the Alphas and the Ergo kit and you're good to go. It's it's much easier. Yeah, S same, same with 40% as well. You can just get Alphas and there's uh, like a 40% kit. Those are often way cheaper. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been looking around, like comparing on some of the, the Cat pricings, and to outfit a lot of 40%, it only costs you like 50 to 60 bucks, which is, yeah, which which is, is pretty cheap, all things considered. And Cat profile, yeah. very nice, so... Fully agree. Bug Whisper comes back and saying assembly. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Assembly. I couldn't remember what. Lots, yeah, he calls them the assembly kits, right? Where it's Ergodox and I think something else included in yeah. there as well. Like out, out, yeah, it's basically meant to just outfit an Ergodox and nothing else. Yeah, yeah, cool. So love all the versions of this. I think uh, McNoss did a really good job on this, and I can't wait to see it. I'd love to see. Um, yeah, I'm assuming that he will update with other color samples as. Uh, time goes on just because he does have the original color samples here which i don't mm -hmm. think are, are quite accurate just like uh just like he agrees so i'm looking forward to the uh the more updated samples as well because this could be a really underrated set i i fully agree i think this is going to be a really nice set and i think uh, gmk foo you which is in group by right now similar kind of colors you know uh, is really nice too the best bit of this interest check though he says the backstory as to why i'm doing cat Someone kept bugging me to rerun this in SA, so I decided to do CAT. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's um, a really, uh, really sure, good insight. Sure. I, I, I would much rather use CAT profile <clears throat> than SA. But, same. Yeah. I would absolutely hold my hands up and say exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Can't really argue with it. A lot of people loving it. All right. Let's, uh, we spent enough time on that one. Let's go ahead and move on to our next interest check. This one's GMK Posh. By Anne Loves Bears, and this is a, uh, a relatively simple set without too much information and um, some some okay renders. I'll go with okay renders. I don't want to sound too mean here, um, but yeah, I, I I don't know. How do we feel about this set, Jay? Uh, I, I I like the naming of, of it. So uh, so Jim K. Posh. The definition of posh is elegant and fashionable. Uh, inspired by the main colours of the British clothing company Jack Willis. Uh, fine, yeah, uh, sorry, Jack Wills, sorry, I've said it right. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. I think that fits the theme. The colours definitely fit the theme. Uh, being dragged into a multitude of Jack Wills shops over the years, I get the colours <laughs> work. Um, uh, I don't know who did these renders, but they, they kind of do look a little bit off to me. Uh, there's, there's kind of uh, some disparity. I think there's there's too much light in the actual board renders, um, and it's difficult to actually see how they're going to look in real life. Where I think you get the right view of what the contrast might look like is in the actual kit breakdown, where it shows a standardized base kit. Uh, no options in that, just a, a standard ANSI base kit, uh, full size. So uh, still to be confirmed what keys are available. But I think those show off very much more how the keycaps might look in real life. For me, I think the ones with the darker alphas look better, so the alpha legends in a dark blue works much better than in the pink. I think in the pink they might have some uh, legibility issues, especially in bright, harsh lights. Um, but I do like the pink modifier set on the uh, the third final option, so it be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, I don't really have too much um, opinion on this, to be totally honest with you. I think the, the, the lighting, like you mentioned, and the renders seems a little off. The uh, the user actually mentions that, too, after the renders as well, if there's going to be inconsistencies with that. You know, we don't have, like, a whole lot of base kit breakdown to really judge, because this one is obviously just from keycapsrenders.com, and this one yeah. is just a very standard 104 layout. Obviously, neither of those are going to wind up being the base kit, so we can't really talk about compatibility or anything. Color-wise, I think it looks fine. I actually like the pink the most, so I prefer um, I prefer the uh, the third set with the pink on the modifiers. But I also kind of like mm -hmm. the, uh, the 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 pink on the um, the Alpha Legend color. You're right. Sure. I think there could be contrast issues there, but if they get the contrast right, I think that could actually look really good. But uh, it, it may just be a, a, a the, a, the, the render quality, to be honest, as well, because when you actually look at the colors that have selected, so uh, two RAL colors in the GMK CP, they they look like they shouldn't have any legibility issues at all. So it could just be the renders that are the issue there. Yeah. So we don't really know. I don't. I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know why I added this to the doc. Honestly, usually I I, I only add interest checks that have more info than this, but. Uh, 
just goes to show it you. It was how, a light news week. Th yeah, th th this is literally one of three key set topics this week, so uh, you know we were clearly hurting for it. Uh, regardless, people in, people in chat saying it's blue, blue Olivia. <laughs> but, uh, oh, okay, sure, sure. Why not? <laughs> Everything's Olivia. That's that's the meme, anyways. Um, yeah, I, I think the set could have potential. We just need better renders and we need more information. So. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get that, and if the user is watching this, hopefully they take that to heart, and uh, we'd love to check this out during the group buy phase. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. In a similar interest check vein, we're going to check out interest check for GMK Blush, which has uh, very similar issues with the renders, I would say, as well as the lack of info. But I, I kind of like this colorway, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, like a soft grey with the kind of peachy colour, a vibrant peachy colour. Yeah, yeah I like so it. something about that grey really does it for me. Um, it's and it's it makes, a nice grey. I, I wonder if... I think these renders are probably done by the same person that did the renders from the last set, I feel like. <laughs> very, very similar style. It, it does feel very close, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, similar sort of boards, similar sort of layouts, similar sort of kind of renders, similar sort of lighting. Yeah. Yeah, so again, not a whole lot of info on this and uh, very limited renders, so not a whole lot to say on it. Just kind of wanted to show it off because I uh, I like this gray a lot. I think this set, again, could have a lot of potential. Yeah, uh, I, I think this has more potential than the previous one, if I'm completely honest. Uh, if I was going to pick one of the two, I would go for this one. Same. Need to see more. Just need to see more. You know, kits, breakdowns, choices, some better renders. You know, all of that we need to see to be able to make uh, make uh, some choices. Uh, they have chosen RAL colors, so this should be absolutely achievable uh, within, you know, group by with, with GMK. So, yeah, but I'm not sure how representative these are because in each of the three pictures in each of three renders the colors look very very different uh the the gray shade and the peach pink shade is so different in each of the three renders that i can't get a handle on which one's right uh if it's the middle one i think that looks the nicest out of the three where it's kind of quite vibrant on the peach and quite nice and uh soft on the gray um i think that would if it looked like that in real life i'd be very happy but yeah. uh yeah yeah if it looks like this in real life it's a must buy for me but Alas, I think we'll need uh, some better renders and some more information before we can continue that. But props to them for using yeah. RAL colors. Cool. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. All right, well, let's move away from key sets and over to something that's kind of interesting, actually. So uh, this is an interest check for H1 Linear Switches by HHHH, uh, a.k.a. Quad H, H8, or uh, a.k.a. Uh, was it Hing Hing Hong Hing? Yeah, Hing Hing Hong Hing. Is that, is that yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the, the person behind the Salamander, um, which is a TKL that uh, a lot of people are into? Um, this is apparently his first switch, and this is kind of an interesting one. So it is manufactured by JWK, uh, slash The Rock, <laughs> I guess, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, yep. And uh, one thing they, they make note of is that these are not ordinary JWK linears. So apparently these have actually been uh, reworked and the molds have been modified under HHHH's uh, specifications. So I, I, I believe we had the same thing with marshmallows. I think the marshmallows also had slightly modified molds uh, based mm -hmm. on what Thick Thock were after. So we might be seeing something similar here. Regardless, I mean, they can say that they've modified molds all they want, but at the end of the day, it's probably going to feel very similar to other JWK linears. Maybe not identical, probably not identical, but very similar. Um, which is good, because a lot of people have been liking JWK switches. They are, without a doubt, probably really the, good. the smoothest on the com in the community, really. Um, you know, they, they have pretty decent tolerances, the pricing's not too bad, the MOQ's absurdly low. Um, so a lot of people have been really liking JWK lately for, um, for custom switches, and, you know, I can't really blame them. Uh, this one's going to be yeah. using a custom 78 gram gold plated spring, which is kind of interesting. Usually, we don't see custom switches with springs that heavy. Usually, people stay uh, within the kind of 60 to 70 gram range here. You get a little bit more there, but that's because that's what the uh, the designer here likes. Um, another thing that's kind of interesting is uh, he was actually going for something that was supposed to kind of um, be at least inspired by vintage Cherry MX Blacks. And if you scroll down here, you can check out the picture. Uh, they've nailed the look pretty much, um, if that's what they're going for. So they're going for a black opaque, full opaque black housing, as well as a black stem. So it's going to kind of replicate visually 
what a vintage MX Black might look like as well. And uh, should be pretty awesome. He does have some sound tests, which admittedly do sound fantastic. I listened to them before the stream. I'm not going to play them on the stream, but I do suggest you listen to them. But uh, they they sound great. They sound incredibly smooth. They they sound like what we expect from a current JWK linear. And for that, I can't really complain. This does use a polycarbonate top, a what is effectively a nylon bottom. Stem is palm. So really nothing out of the ordinary there. We're not seeing any new materials or anything. Um... But yeah, it should be a pretty good switch. These did run in Korea last month, about three weeks ago. But um, because of the success there, they wanted to try to bring it to the Western market. And I believe that's where Enigma comes in, who's kind of acting as uh, as kind of help for this. Because I don't know how well uh, Quad H's English is, for example. So. I think in the thread when I was reading through, it answered a few people to say... Uh, you know, give answers to a few questions, I think. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but either way, I think... It's nice to see a heavier switch uh, in the custom market. You know, 78 grams is what I tend to go with. 72, 78 grams is where my comfort spot is for switch springs. So it's really nice to see that. I will absolutely be picking some of these up because of that. Um, you know, yeah. we, we, as you said before, we usually see people stick to around 55 to 67 is kind of the broad range that most springs, spring weighting seem to fall into. So to have something that's a little bit heavier, absolutely straight up my street. Yep, can't complain. There is no mention of price that I could find, but if it's like all other JWK switches, it's probably going to be around <coughs> the 55 cent mark. Uh, 55 cents a piece, not too bad for custom switches these days, um, especially, you know, when they feel as good as JWK switches have been. So mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, I, just like the rest of them, I imagine this is going to be uh, probably quite successful in the Western market. Can't really complain. I think a lot of people are going to be happy with uh, the coloring on this too. The fact that it's just an all black... Uh, housing, opaque, you get the black stem. It is kind of reminiscent of that vintage black feel. It's kind of nice to not have uh, switches that are, you know, just kind of crazy colors or translucent. It's kind of nice to kind of go back to the basics here and there. And that's what they're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. One of the interesting things that Quad H did say later on in the thread that I did read was that uh, whilst the uh, the mold had been modified to his specification for these particular switches, those molds were open for anyone to use by JWK's rules. So whilst he wanted it to be his specific mold, uh, JWK very much said that if we make this mold, anyone can come and use it if they want to. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so the, that mold is there. So other people may or may not be able to use that going forward. Sure, sure. All right, so bam, there you go. That's uh, that's coming soon, guys. It's coming soon. I'll definitely be Melody doing asks, as well. Melody does ask about what the clone switch is. Yeah, so it was on Studio 43. Let me see if I can oh. find the link. I did have this up. I was reading about uh, earlier on. Um, we won't cover it on the show, but I'll just drop the link in. So if you guys want to go and read up about the clone switch, it's there in the chat. You guys can look. Yeah, he does make mention of that in the post as well. I just didn't touch on it because I wasn't sure uh, how that situation was actually going. Yeah. So, bam. There you go, guys. But looking pretty interesting. I'll be sure to pick some up as well. Cool. All right. So, we're actually going to be moving on to our sponsor section. And then our Q&A, as usual, we'll end with. But uh, before yeah. that, Jay and I wanted to gauge your thoughts on something. So, uh, yeah, that's... we have a, a little bit of a straw poll for you guys to fill out. Now, no one noticed this up at the beginning of the show, but this week we didn't do a mail call. Uh, most most weeks we do a mail call right at the beginning of the show where Brian and I share what we've received in the past week or since we were either of us last on the show if you're taking a break. Uh, and we show you guys what that was, you know, whether it's artisans or boards or key sets, whatever. Uh, but we didn't do that this week. So what we wanted is you guys to fill out this, uh, this mail call straw poll. Tell us, do you want to, you know, us to show you each week what we've got in the mail? Or do you not want to see that? It's, it's fine either way. We're not going to be offended if you pick no and we don't want to share it. We're just looking at ways to streamline the show and give you guys what you want to see. So we thought we'd try it this week without uh, without having the mail call up at the front of the show. And now it's time for you guys to give us some feedback. So please feel free to fill out the straw poll uh, whilst we go through the vendors uh, and our sponsorship segment. Uh, and then feel free to ask us some questions afterwards. But yeah, I yep. just wanted to uh, see what your results were on that. Yep. Absolutely. So, starting us off today, as usual, is zealpc.net, a.k.a. Zeal Generation, which you can find over at zealpc.net slash topclack if you want to help us out a lot. He has his usual array of switches and things in right now. 
uh, which have been uh, have been pretty nice. I've been using quite a bit of them lately, as usual, and I've been loving all of them. So he does have linears, tactiles, silent linears, and silent tactiles. So something for everyone, regardless of what you're looking for. He's got you covered. And he does have a clicky switch coming out soon as well that he was teasing at CES not too long ago. So pretty excited for that. But the switches really are fantastic. I've been loving all of them. And uh, if you do want to get some, make sure you use that affiliate link to really help out Top Black. Awesome. Uh, speaking of helping out Top Black, you might also want to visit novelkeys.xyz. So Mike and gang have got quite a few different uh, things in the store. Their store is absolutely jam-packed at the minute. So if you guys are interested in key sets, you might want to take a look at GMK Darling by our very own Apocalypse, uh, which is a lovely red and pink key set, which doesn't clash as much as you'd expect it to. It actually looks really lovely. Both Brian and I really, really like this when we talked about it on the show a little while back. Uh, and that's now in group buy, so you can go pick that up. If GMK is not your thing, you could also take a look at Cam Wraith. So this is a sister set to Cat. Cam is all row three from uh, from Cat. Uh, so you can uh, have a fully kind of uh, custom layout. So, so it's kind of like a standardized key shape all the way through. So there's no curves to the profile or anything like that. Uh, you've got the standard keys all through there, uh, which is uh, very reminiscent of the old uh, ZX Spectrum. If any of you guys remember those from back in the day, uh, I really, really like the designs on the spacebar and the escape key. This is definitely a must buy set for me. Uh, so I'm really excited to see that. Lots of different kits as well. So you guys can look through those. Uh, if uh, if you do like GMK, but you want something a little bit different, uh, the GMK Star Wars set is still on sale as well. Uh, so this is the Boba Fett, GMK Boba Fett uh, key set. So it has custom Mandalorian Legends. It is officially licensed by Disney, who are now the owners of the Star Wars IP. So this is a fully legitimate set. It is not a clone or anything else or a reproduction. This is a legitimate uh, Star Wars you know, collectible item. So feel free to go and check that out if you're interested, guys. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, and of course, Mike also has all of the random different switches, springs, lubes. You name it. The store is full to breed with all sorts of different things. There's even multiple different boards on there. I think there's a new version of the Let's Split on there that's come out recently. Uh, all sorts of stuff. So whatever you want, guys, you can probably pick it up from the store. And if it is something that's in stock and not in group buy, you can use the code Click Clack. That's C L I C K C L A C K. Click Clack. All one word, and that will get you five percent off anything in stock. Yes, absolutely. Moving on, we have Input Club over at Kono.Store, Store, who has a few things going on right now, including Cat Oasis, which is one of my favorite sets this month. Um, I still need to join this actually, but uh, I need to figure out what kits I want. But yeah, Cat Oasis still going on. Looks absolutely fantastic. Make sure to check that out. They have a few GMK sets, of course, going on as usual. GMK Spirit. Uh, which is pretty cool. I think we forgot to cover that one, but whoops. <laughs> um, regardless, GMK Spirit looking pretty nice, and that's something you can consider, as well as GMK Hero if you're a fan of Zelda, and GMK Copper if you're a fan of, I don't know, Copper? Shit, I don't know. Cool sets? If you're a fan of cool sets, Copper's pretty cool. <laughs> Copper's really cool, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, taken by surprise by Spirit. I didn't realize it was on there until I the it. And I still didn't think Spirit on the phone. Yeah, I never saw like a threat for it at all. I think it, I feel like it just kind of went up randomly and none of us noticed it. Oh well. Um, yeah. Oh well. Regardless, GMK Fuyu also still in Group Buy too. We talked a little bit that a little bit about that earlier. Definitely, definitely an underrated set in my opinion. And uh, yeah, do they still have the uh, the Romley Switch books on here too? Because everyone needs to buy one of those if you don't have one yet. I believe it is still on the site, but it's not on the main page anymore. I was looking for it earlier on. I think if you search for Romley, it does pop up, but I'm not sure if you can still buy it. Oh, yes, there it is. Fantastic. If you haven't bought one of these yet, only 30 bucks. Totally worth it. It's a really neat book, and uh, it's a good conversation starter for, like, coffee table dinner parties and stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, if you're really fancy, like us, because apparently we throw dinner parties and stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you might not, but I do. <laughs> I'm not nearly cool enough to throw dinner parties, Jay. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, we don't either. We have we have people over for dinner, but we don't throw dinner parties. Yeah, yeah. two very different things. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back on track. <laughs> so yeah, make oh. sure to check all that stuff out. Cat Oasis, looking fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, next, if you want to uh, take a look at KBD fans, they are now just about back from Chinese New Year, so orders will start shipping soon. Uh, I think they're just waiting for the last vestments of coronavirus to uh, to drift out, but uh, KBD fans are back. Uh, in group by at the minute, they have got Enjoy PBT Venice. So if you want to try some double-shot ABS from EPBT, 
that's in stock right now and you can go take a look at that um i, I haven't seen anyone with these keycaps yet brian i don't know if you've seen anyone have them delivered yet uh not yet i actually still need to ask way for a set of this because yeah. i really do so, want to try this out I, I did hear that they were shipping from the 10th now i haven't check that but i did hear that people had got them shipped on the 10th so uh hopefully uh people will be in getting those soon and we can take a look at the quality of them but interesting to see an abs set from epbt uh, additionally to that they also have the laser on switches still in group buy so if you are wanting to pick those up they are now shipping as well um we tried these out towards the back end of last year and they're you know really good standard uh, gator on linears but they have that lovely uh laser theme as well so if you've got an sa laser set that's just come in you might want to check those switches out for your build as well as that, there is also all of the different entry-level kits that you could possibly ever want that KBD fans offers. So they have a ton of different kits out there. The 67, KBD 67 has a waiting list. So someone, someone mentioned the KBD 67 waiting list is at like 1,800 people long it's right nuts. now. It's nuts. It's nuts. Which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. So if you are interested in that board, go check it out. But they do have an awful lot of other boards available as well. Um, so yeah, it's really, really, uh, really there's just everything on the KBD fan store these days. and You can fit any board you want. Uh, and you can also check out the B-Stock store as well, which uh, might give you something that uh, is a great beta board, is a great board to take to work, which could be an absolute bargain. And I suspect that that's going to get refreshed very quickly as uh, KBD fans come back to work in the next few days. Yeah, absolutely. All right, last but not least, we have the Key Dot Company, who has numerous things going on right now. I actually love the way they have their, setup, uh, their, their website set up right now. Just drops you to the group by page, tells you everything clearly where it ends, etc. Love that. Love the new look. So they are doing Infiniki Hive still that ends uh, in just about a week this month. Uh, I just need to get in on that as well. Really inexpensive base kit. Starts at 80 bucks, and you get uh, pretty good compatibility for that $80, uh, all things considered. Also, the Godspeed 75. Talked a little bit about this one earlier. Pretty nice looking board in Group I right now. Starting at 380 bucks, which really isn't that bad for a board of this quality. So make sure to check that out as well. GMK Future Funk still going on until the end of the month. So that's, uh, as I said, a lot of people have been pretty hyped for. And there's uh, lots of things going on with it. They even have apparel for Future Funk, which is kind of cool. I like seeing apparel. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time we saw apparel for a set? Was it Laser? Laser, yeah. Was it laser? So. Yeah, I think okay. it was laser, yeah. 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 Although having said that, Langelandia, the beautiful man that he is, he did have GMK Cafe t shirts at Seattle Meetup last year. Um uh, sadly I never got one off of him. I think he only might have only had the one the one he was wearing, but uh, he did have uh, uh cafe t shirts. So okay. yeah, I would have paid good money for that. <laughs> um anyways, <laughs> I, back I to also... okay. I was just gonna say I also <laughs> might pay good money for one of these future fun hoodies if they're as soft as this one. They're... Yes, exactly. Are they? The, I imagine it's got to be the same manufacturer, right? Because if so, I believe it totally is. I've asked Jason anyway, so uh, hopefully he'll tell me if it is. Yeah, totally worth it. And they also have caps as well. They have a few other things in stock too. If you're looking for uh, some C3 stabilizers, maybe some desk mats, he's got you covered. And also, last but not least, they are still hiring for a social media strategist. That's the position they're looking for. I'll put the link in chat there as well. I don't think they've hired for the position yet, but if you are interested in working at the key.company uh, as a social media person, this could be totally for you. Good uh, good way to kind of get get into the keyboard community, get into you know some cool stuff and uh, learn learn a lot about the community and the products that people like. So, could be something totally uh, totally cool if you're in the market. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's uh, swap layouts here and go back to our Q and A. So this is, of course, the Q and A section. So if you guys have questions, hopefully we have the answers for you. Make sure to use the at top clack tag so we can see the questions a lot easier. Helps us out way more than you think. Yeah, and just a reminder, guys, I'm going to put the link in again, but you can fill out the straw poll on whether you want to just do mail call in the show still or not. This week we tried not doing it, and it's up to you guys to tell us whether to bring it back or to leave it. A you know, leave it alone yeah. and not bring it back at all. Yeah. So the idea, obviously, uh, is to kind of streamline the show. We've had a lot of episodes lately that have been two and a half, three, even three and a half hours long. And we realize that's kind of excessive because a lot of you have to work tomorrow. You know, time zones are a thing. It's. I know it's not ideal. Timing is never ideal when you're trying to cater to people all around the world. It just doesn't work out. Unfortunately, that's how it is. But we do want to try to keep the show a little bit more concise going forward because we're going to be putting out... Um, 
you know, we're pr putting out other content as well, obviously, behind the keyboard starting tomorrow. We have other series in the works. We don't want to just put all of our time into this series. So this one needs to get a little bit more concise, more streamlined, try to get around that two hour mark. So that way you guys don't have to sit through a three or four hour stream. And, uh, you know, ideally we can kind of just uh, work on that all together as a team. But uh, you know, the mail call in particular is just something that doesn't, it doesn't really accomplish anything. It's kind of just like, here, this is kind of playful. Let's, you know, let's see what you got, got this week or whatever. But, like, it doesn't actually accomplish anything. So I feel like maybe it's just time for it to go. And that saves us, you know, five or ten minutes every single episode on Thursdays. I, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have disagreed with you before the show, but just looking at the way the vote's going, I think it's excessively in a uh, in the case of uh, keep it in. So, I didn't even. I haven't looked yet. Is it really? Yeah, eighty-eight yeah. percent to uh, to say yes. It's cool to see what we've got, and uh, uh, oh, the numbers don't actually add up because it says eighty-eight percent for that and thirteen percent for no, it's a social faux pas. There we go. It's, it's fixed. Wow, that's twelve percent. So people like to know what we've had in the post. That's a uh, big recently, difference. Wow. Okay. Yeah, there has been a few different uh, suggestions during the chat. I don't know who said it first, but I did see Mr. Petrov say we should move it in the show, so not have it right up at the front and have it right at the beginning of the Q and A section. So in this oh, little bit okay. that we do now, we could do the mail call here, which might be something we should try next week. Yeah, I I also am thinking I kind of want to try <clears throat> splitting up the sponsor section again. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about this live on stream right now, but I remember we tried we tried that not too long ago, and we actually did a straw poll after we did it, and hmm. it, it was technically in favor of uh, separating the sponsor spots throughout the stream. That way, it's not just you know four or five sponsors all at one time, um, which I, we know can get a little a little fatiguing because it's just you know two and a half, three, four minutes of straight sponsor talk, but uh, you know. That's, uh, that's part of how this goes, but, uh, you know, splitting them up could be another potential option as well if you guys uh, prefer that. We're always looking for yeah. feedback, man. Just, uh, you know, be be positive, be polite, but, you know, don't be afraid to give constructive criticism as well. Yeah, reach out, tell us. You can hit, you can email us, talkback at gmail.com. You can reach out to Brian or I on the, uh, the Discord servers. You can message us through Twitch if you like. However you want to get in touch, just leave a comment <laughs> on the YouTube videos. <laughs> don't message us through Twitch. We don't check that, really. <laughs> I do. You I always look at that. Do you? I never look at Twitch yeah. messages. Oh, really? Never. I always look at the friend requests as well, and they go through, and I, I sort those out every couple of weeks as well. So. I always look at YouTube comments, though. I, you, I, do more, you do that more than I do, actually. I, I yeah. go through almost every YouTube comment, which is getting a little tiresome, to be totally honest, because there's so many, usually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, back to uh, back to the Q&A. We can still, obviously, still consider and marinate all over this, and that's totally cool. Uh, but let's uh, answer some questions as well, since that's uh, the, good. The, the part we're in now. So it uh, looks like our... First question comes from Xenotropic, asking, any ideas or experience preventing ESD, electric uh, static discharge, from harming mm -hmm. PCBs in metal cases? I live in an area with pretty bad ESD, and I think ESD has ruined a few of my builds. Interesting. This is something I feel like we haven't really talked about ever. Yeah. Um, so, so I've had the question a few times around boards that I've been running or doing whatever with, and it really does depend on the PCB designer as to whether they include that or not. So, so I, I spoke to Yanka, who's a well-respected PCB designer on this, and he says uh, that he's never had any experiences with ESD destroying his keyboards. But then again, we live in the UK where it isn't technically, you, you know, where there isn't loads of buildups of static or anything like that in the air uh, from the environment. Uh, whereas some people do live in other places. I was talking to Upas, who did the PCB for the JO2, and he said that he absolutely adds it to all of his PCBs. So I think it very much depends on environmental influences from where the PCB designer is as to whether that's something they consider. Um, but it's cheap enough to add to PCBs these days that I don't think that it should be a, you know, something that we skip anymore i think it should be something that we just add as a standard uh, standardized feature to be honest uh in terms of how to prevent it if you've got if you're experiencing it and you're, you're tapping a keyboard and you're getting small electric shocks and things like that um the only thing i can suggest is to try and ground yourself beforehand you know uh, don't scuff your feet on carpets and build up static electricity that way that kind of stuff uh, but it's it's very difficult to prevent i'm afraid yeah yeah that's that's kind of just Kind of just the way it goes, but uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of PCB designers these days are keeping that in mind, and they are trying to design around that, you know, ESD over voltage protection stuff like that. 
Um, so, you know, th those features are being implemented more and more often lately, which is nice to see. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what, fact, what, what else can you, I mean, let's, let's get a little bit more detailed on this question. Like, what, what exactly is, uh, how exactly are you getting the ESD out of these PCBs? Is it coming from the case? Is it coming from the plate? Is it coming from something else? Because there are ways to protect. You. Well, it, it, it could be from you as a person. So you'll be well, out in the environment, you'll build up static on you, and then as soon as you touch something, it, it, it does the discharge. Um, so so you, it, it's about you having a different polarity to what the, the, the PCB in the case have. Um, and as soon as you get close to it, there's a different, there's a transfer of that. Are uh, you referring to the building process where you're handling the PCB, or are you referring to the process where you're typing on it? It can even be in use. It. it can even be in use, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, you can I, actually, you can, you can, uh, you can, you can static discharge on a PCB through GMK keycaps and switches. I think it's absolutely possible to do from what I understand. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's rare and it's unusual, but uh, I don't think it's impossible to have. Um, I mean, to try and fix that, though, you could use a rubber-based desk mat. If you don't use a desk mat, say, try putting a rubber-based desk mat down. That might help. Yeah, I mean, you, if... Like uh, particularly during the building process, you could just try to discharge yourself a lot. It's it's not unlike building a computer. Um, you know, just touch large metal objects to discharge yourself or get an anti-static wrist uh, bracelet or whatever. Uh, very, yeah. very, yeah. very cheap, and they come with a lot of stuff usually. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's that's. If you if you if you got metal desk legs, touch those before you touch a keyboard. You know, yeah. just try that's to what I do. Into a yeah, I touch T my touch those desk and... Yeah, yeah, you try and touch something metal that's grounded and, and then touch your keyboard and that might help. Um, but I've, I've never known people have, like, it, it's so bad that they've had, like, six keyboards and they've all broken within a week or something just from using them. Um, but, yeah, it feels uh, yeah. maybe maybe not quite a widespread issue. It's probably a little bit more, uh, a little bit more localized to uh, specific people and regions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. Okay. Yeah, Langleone says, uh, thanks for the love, I'll send you one. I think he's referring to the apparel, the cafe apparel. Oh, the t-shirt, the, the cafe t-shirt, yeah. Nice one, thank you. Cool. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, okay, so before we get any more questions, let's address the mail call thing right now. Since it has way more votes to be seen versus not seen, should we just do a mail call real quick right now? Uh, I'm not prepped for it because I didn't because we did we said we weren't doing it. I didn't bring anything here. But if you've got things to hand, go for it, and I'll just add. Uh, to I'll try. I'll there. do a really fast one because I have several things here. Um, so I did get numerous switches, including some uh, some red inks from Novel Keys. These are a project. Um, I need to be lubing and spring swapping these very soon, and I'm going to be rebuilding uh, my friend's LZ Iron. So I got the red inks because I feel like they'll fit the color theme a little bit better for the uh, the kind of red of the LZ Iron. Um, you know, a really unpopular board, but it's kind of also iconic in its own right. And for good reason, nice. too. So that's going to be a fun rebuild. Of course, I'll stream that. I did get uh, some new switches <coughs> and, of course, some of the lilacs and uh, mauve switches. So oh, I'll be, yeah. be, uh, be lubing up and trying out some of those. Um, I also got uh, a couple GMK sets. Got a, I found a pretty good price on a GMK Cyan from a user in uh, the Discord. So happy about that. I also picked up GMK White on Black. Uh, another very cheap and expensive set that's not very exciting. But these are sets that I've owned before and had to sell for uh, various reasons. But um, glad to have them back now. I also, uh, if anyone saw the stream on Tuesday night that I did... Um, I have a Brutal now. I have a Brutal 60. I believe this is a round two version. Um, nothing terribly fancy, but I haven't owned a Brutal before, so I was kind of interested to try one out, and the price was a little bit too hard to pass up. Um, it came with nice. an Instant 60 PCB, so I got to check that out, too. Um, is, is that Mizu that you put on it? This is Mizu, yeah. Carbon fiber plate yeah. in there as well. I have some Silverstone silencing foam under the PCB, which really works wonders for the sound of this board. And then uh, these switches are just some lubed and filmed T1 switches, uh, courtesy of Straight Classy. So Nice. Very nice. This board actually feels and sounds pretty nice, honestly, all things considered. So, yeah, I, cool. got, I got a lot in this week. Very exciting. Nice. Nice. It's really cool. Yeah. I'm, I, because we said we weren't doing it, I'm not prepped I, at all to do a yeah. mail call. Everything yeah. is kind of all over the office and stuff like that. So I, I will just add it to next week's. And what we should do next week is we should move it to right at the very beginning of the Q&A section. So we'll do sponsors, and then we'll do mail call, and then we'll do Q&A. Hmm. Okay. Try that out and see how that goes. Yeah. Seems reasonable enough for me. Okay, uh, chat scroll on too far that I can't go back far enough to see the next question, so you're going to have to do the doing on that one, Brian. 
That's fine. I just like kind of unplugged my keyboard accidentally, so I'll just plug it back in. Um, all right, <laughs> back to the Q and A, guys. Uh, Geo says something. Uh, he agrees with Petrov. Okay. Uh, Q and A at the or um, mail call the Q and A start. Sure, we'll, we'll yeah. consider that. Lots of people suggested that, so I think we should try that next week. Okay, we'll do it at the start of the Q and A. Sounds good to me. Uh, what sellers asking? I've heard of some people talking about the inconsistencies in the V1 Inver UHM WPE stems. Can you speak to what these are slash how significant they are? Uh, yeah, uh, a little bit. So I, uh, my batch was pretty much okay. Um, I didn't have any experience with this, but uh, from what I understood, some people did have uh, some stems that were slightly larger than others where the tolerances were slightly off. Uh, I did see a comment that someone said that Zisp had addressed this and that future rounds would be fixed and wouldn't have that issue. Uh, but it just means that the odd particular stem in your bag of 120, you might need to put it to one side and you might to cherry pick which stems you use. So that's pretty much where it is. Uh, whether that's something that you appreciate or not it's around one of a product these things sometimes happen it's a small hobbies community so you know you can do as much qc as you like but sometimes you're going to miss that uh that type of thing you, you could you could test 100 switches or 100 stems and 100 switches and be fine and just happen to miss 20 that you know the uh, that uh, have issues i think it was about one in 10 one in 15 uh, uh on average where it was uh, affected it was really small numbers uh but as i say going forwards in future rounds there shouldn't be any uh significant impacts and i think it just made them a little bit tighter to press they're a little bit more inconsistent um uh, and not quite as smooth as the uh, the ones who are to the correct tolerances so there we go yeah i i still haven't actually put mine in a board yet but uh, from what I, I, I have heard the exact same thing from every single person I've talked to about it. There are inconsistencies in the sizes, the tolerances. So, I mean, that's, sure. it's unfortunate, but, you know, what can you do? This is how, you know, we get revisions. Product revisions and product updates exist for a reason. You know, if every product launched perfectly, that'd be amazing. But, you know, it just doesn't really work like that. So it is a bummer, but, hey, you know, at least they're relatively inexpensive. And he is working actively on V2 updates. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully that won't be too much longer. But, um, you know, feeling-wise, smoothness-wise, people seem to be pretty happy with the stems overall. It's just yeah. it's just the uh, the tolerance issues. And, you know, some can feel a little bit more less, 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 a little bit less wobbly than others. Some might feel more. You never really know. Um, it's just, just variants, unfortunately. Hopefully the next round's better. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Uh, depleted, depleted Vespine saying, never mind the 27 seconds, what would you do if 27 switches suddenly dropped into your desk? I don't understand the joke. Uh, I don't know. 27 switches suddenly dropped onto my desk. I'd probably be very surprised. A little bit concerned because there's no holes in the ceiling, so where did they come from? Um... What would I do? I I would probably put them in my switch jar. Um, so I've got a big jar of random switches. So whenever I do a build, I'll usually lube a couple of extra switches. Uh, and in fact, I'll get it and show. Uh, just to see. Uh, so I have this jar, which is just full of random switches. Uh, it's a tall mason jar. Um, one day, the plan is to do a really random build to pick some poor... Um, keyboard for an experiment <laughs> and basically it's going to be blind switch build so every time i need a new switch i'm just going to randomly dip my hand into a jar circle it around pick out a random switch but that's the next switch that goes in the board uh so the whole board is going to be different switches um but yeah uh, whenever i get around to that but yeah there we go uh, that, that, that sounds awful and amazing at the same time yeah i mean there's all sorts of stuff in here there's uh, oh there's a there's a white top a uh, white stem thing see there um some face switches, some maroons, some OG cherry switches. Uh... I wonder. I wonder if you are the only person in the world that has a Nixie and a Mason jar. Uh, I don't know. There's there's some uh, Hirose switches in here as well. Uh... Hirose. <laughs> Hirose. 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 Uh... Yeah, there, there is some in here. There's, there's pretty much everything. Inks, right. Everglides. I, I hate to interrupt your your mason jar switches, yeah. Sorry. Jay, but uh, I, I do want to I do want to make note of something that Melodid actually just brought up. He says you could do the mail call instead of the intro segment, like before the actual show starts. So he's uh, he's referring to the pre-show that we do 
before we officially go live every single episode. So that could okay. be a good, a good time to do it because there we're just kind of rambling and you know talking and answering questions anyway. We're not really doing anything terribly important. That could be a good time for mail call because it won't officially affect the the, uh, the time of the show. Yeah, we could definitely do that. And yeah, let's if, try that. Yeah, and to the people that uh, – I think that's a really good idea. We should try that next week. Um, that's a really good idea. So if people do want to see the mail call, they can just make it for the pre-show. And if they don't care about the mail call, they can just watch the official show. They don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Win -win. So I think we should. I think we should try both out. I think we should next week we'll try that one as you suggested. The week after we'll try putting it here in the uh, in in this section, and we'll see how people feel. And whichever one people like, we'll go with that. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you very much for the suggestion, Melody. Uh, Langlandia with our next question: If animals could speak to humans, which species would be the most rude? Hmm. If animals could speak to humans, which species would be most rude? Uh... I have no idea. The most rude? Um... I mean, probably... Everyone just spamming cats in chat. Cats wouldn't be... no. Pigeon? No, it'd, reckon... probably, it'd, it'd probably be like a bird, right? Like a, Maybe like a crow mm -hmm. or like a pigeon. I, re I reckon it'd be some form of monkey, because... The, the one that stole Petrov's Sirius? Yeah, that that particular monkey. That one there, yeah. That, that, that yeah. actual so, animal, that literal animal. So Langolandi <laughs> actually messes up here. He doesn't ask why... He doesn't include us to ask why... Or he doesn't ask why we would choose that. He just asks which species would be the most rude. So we, we don't have to elaborate at all. No elaboration. Fine, okay. Monkey. Monkey. There you go. There's your answer. And I'm not answering a why. <laughs> just not doing it just not doing it alright sorry still scrolling through here guys uh, shout out to uh, to Iwane who gifted a tier 1 sub to Osiris very nice thank you nice bro. nice always nice to have uh, Osiris in the house let's see uh, mapdev1 is asking your preferred linear that can actually be obtained uh, well that's the thing nowadays it, almost every switch that people like is very accessible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you I, like Gateron inks? Bam, go out and buy them. You like Telios? They're always in stock. You like uh, all these new JWK switches? They're really not that hard to get a hold of, and they're only getting easier and easier and more accessible. So, I, I yeah. mean, right now, I, I don't know. I, I, my favorite so, linear switch still is, is the Telio. Overall, I still prefer the Telio the most. But, I would have to say pretty much all these JWK switches are... You know, equally as they're good. good right? They're equally as good in different ways, maybe. I think some of them have a little bit more of QC issues and tolerance issues. But as far as smoothness is concerned, all these JWK switches are really, really good. Yeah, I, so I was hugely impressed with the Alpacas that I built with last week. Uh, they both sound and feel great. So, real big fan of those. And I've probably drifted away from inks towards more of the JWK switches. So, I'm excited to try my uh, my Morton Lilacs out when they arrive as well. So, they're on the way to Classy, actually, at the minute. Yeah, these, being to come to. these mobs are, um, are <clears throat> very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. As are the Marshmallows. I mean, it, and the Alpacas. I mean, they're all virtually the same kind of thing. Yeah. So, so I, well, exactly right. They're all the first. I'm going to try the, uh, the the quad H uh, ones as well. So uh, I would go for those. But if if you're talking bang for buck, then my money still goes on Gatoron uh, Milky Top switches, uh, which I still have a small ton of. I think. Uh, where, where are they? Yeah. So I've got two two full bags of uh, of these to, to get through. So. Um, Bang for book, I would still go for these. I think that they're absolutely the, the cheapest, the best cheap switch on the market, um, if that's the way you want to put it. But, uh, yeah, if I was going to pick and choose, I'd probably say some variation of JWK right now. Alpacas are the ones I've tried most recently, and I was really, really happy with those in the last build yeah. that I did, uh, which is my Lubriganti. So, yeah. They're, I mean, JWK linears are pretty much, like, the, the best middle ground right now. They're not that expensive. They're, you know, as smooth as it gets. I mean, they have virtually no friction, like, perceivable friction, uh, especially after lube. So, like, it, there's not really any worries. But, obviously, I could rant on that for a while. And, and, and I would, because I feel like smoothness is mattering less and less in our community now that every single switch is comparable to each other in smoothness. <laughs> then you start yeah. to, like, everything else starts to matter a lot more. You know, spring properties, etc. But all, all yeah. the springs that I've, I've tested from JWK are pretty good. As far as stock springs are concerned, better than pretty much yeah. any of the rest. So, 
my, my, I gotta my agree with you on this. Uh, my, my alpacas were completely stuck. I didn't change the springs or anything. I was really impressed with them. Fully impressed with them. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep, so uh, yeah, I got I gotta agree on that. Uh, pretty much whatever JWK linears you can get your hand on, whether they be alpacas or marshmallows or uh, these mobs, um, I, I think you're gonna be happy with with any of them. I think it, mo mobs might still be around on canonkeys.com um, and or Project Keyboard. I don't think they're in stock anymore. I think they sold out, but I imagine they'll probably be bringing them back because I think they both sold out faster than they were expecting. So hopefully those will make a comeback soon, but you know they're they're circula circulating around the community now. So even if you can't find them in stock anywhere, you might be able to still find some on the aftermarket. For instance, our mech market channel and our uh, top pack Discord, or our slash mech market. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's see Phantom Taco with our next question. Single thing that can turn you off the most about a new keyboard feature slash design wise. Um, I don't think anything turns me off in like interest checks or anything like that. But if I get a board and I open it up and it's something doesn't work how I expected it to work or how it was advertised to work, say a mounting system is very different, or um, or, or say you don't get something that you expected to get. So the the only example I've got for this, and everyone knows what my my worst group I have ever joined was. Um, I can't remember the name of the board now. Uh, what was it? It was the Doro. The Doro 67. I was looking at the box. It just says Backdrop Studio, and I've got it on the floor over here. Um, so, yeah, so the Doro 67, I ordered a brass base plate, and it came in. It was silver, and it was just instant. I haven't even taken the board out of the box in six months because I've just been that annoyed and that frustrated with it. So things like that, not getting what you ordered and something coming way under any acceptable level of quality control uh, is, is really, really frustrating to me. Um, in terms of features and designs, I'm open to trying anything, man. I'll try anything once, you know. Yeah, you Nothing's going to turn me off from a design. Hey, hey. Uh, nothing's <laughs> going to turn me off from, uh, from from trying something just because it's it's got something new on it. You know? A lot yeah. of people said that the, uh, the, 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 the knob on Satisfaction 75 wouldn't have any uses, and I love using that board. Um, yeah. no, knobs are ridiculously functional in our community. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, when, when I, during the build stream for that, there was people saying, oh, I'm not sure if the knob will have any useful value. It's just a gimmick. Absolutely, it's not. For volume control, for zooming in and out, the, the, the place I use that the most is Excel documents to zoom in and out on the, on the Excel document because it means I can fly around huge Excel spreadsheets and work really quickly. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it's 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 all about value. If, uh, if, a feature, if, if a feature costs money but doesn't deliver an, what my perceived value is for how much it costs, that's the turnoff for me. If I'm typing on a keyboard and I go... Like, if I'm typing on a, a $600 keyboard, let's say it's a $600 group by keyboard and I'm typing on it, and it, and it feels like a $200 keyboard, that's kind of a turnoff. Um, so, yeah, all, all about the value for me. Experience per dollar. So, you know, how nice does a keyboard feel versus how much it costs? And if the cost is higher than uh, the enjoyment and experience I get from it, that's absolutely, without a doubt, my biggest turnoff in the keyboard community. All right. Talisman was saying that, uh, come on, Jay, no ISO support would be my biggest turn. That's not true. I have boards that don't support ISO. You know, you know that that you get, I have lots of boards that don't support. ISO. You get way too much crap for that. Yeah, right. It's my preferred layout. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to stop buying stuff for it. Yeah. It doesn't mean to say I hate. Uh, like, there's, there's this big assumption that I hate ANSI keyboards <laughs> because they don't support ISO. That's not the that's not the case. You know. You guys use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm all for offering multiple layouts, and multiple choices. Just because I have a preference, hey, doesn't mean it. I mean, there's there's literally where is it? There's a Zephyr on the board behind me there that doesn't support ISO. That only supports ANSI. Uh, this this board this this only supports ANSI. I know it's Alice layout, but it only supports ANSI. It doesn't support yeah. anything else. It doesn't bother me. I still buy them. Still use them. Yep, absolutely. All right, uh, moving on. Let's uh, so in the interest <laughs> of time here, we're we're about. 20 minutes away from our hard limit that we talked about before the show. Uh, of about, okay, let's do some yeah. quick fire Let's, do, let's do some rapid fire. All right, uh, Hoi asking, uh, would you slash have you ever gotten yourselves ordained and wed a couple? He says wed a couple, but I'm assuming wed a couple is what he means. <sighs> uh, okay. 
I have not. I don't get. I'm assuming this is an inside joke in which I have no idea. It, of. It's it's not an inside joke as such. So I, I don't know if you saw earlier on, but Lewis Flood, who's one of the guys in the top fact Discord and is uh, from the UK, uh, he proposed to his uh, his his partner earlier on today uh, and they said yes so they're getting married which is congratulations Lewis if you watch this I don't know if you watch oh. the show or not, but congratulations um, and they were talking about he should get married at one of the meetups and someone should get ordained and I was explaining how the laws work on that and uh, Huey asked me uh, he said he said uh, how do you know how that works uh, and I said uh, I jokingly said oh there's a bit of a story about that you should ask me at some point on talk back ha 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 not expecting um... him to be awake at 3.40 in the morning to ask the question on talk <laughs> well there you go you played yourself Jay yes now you yes, gotta now you have to answer the question yeah it, it's, <laughs> it's pretty simple Two friends wanted to get married. I got uh, an online ordained certificate. Are you going to marry them? Ceremony. Uh, well, I, no, this is years ago. This is oh. a couple of years ago now. Um, so I, I got the ordained certificate. Uh, I uh, married them, did the ceremony. It was great. It was really good fun. It was a really good day. Um, they're still together now. Um, uh, the, the only slight thing in the UK is whilst I could officiate the ceremony and do the vows, I couldn't actually sign the registrar documents or anything else. So they still had to go to a registry okay. office yeah. to have the official signatories and everything else done. Uh, but yeah, it was simple as that. Just they wanted it doing and they asked me and I said yes. So yeah, it was right. dead simple. Are, now, are you going to uh, um, wed Lewis and his partner? I have no plans to. I mean, if they ask me, I'd be very honoured. But um, that, if they want to get if they want to get married at a keyboard meetup, well, is is Lewis's partner into keyboards as well? I have no because, idea because because that that'd be awesome because it, like getting married at a meetup or something that's that's so cool and it really does bring like the whole community aspect into it. I love that. It would be really interesting, but yeah, uh, yeah I. I yeah, I have no idea if, uh, if his partner is into the keyboards or not. Uh, uh, Lewis is a really great guy. We, we go to the pub every now and again when I'm in London. So, yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yes. Uh, I am not ordained, sadly. But maybe I should be. So I can just wed keyboard people. <laughs> I, I, I think it cost me, like, less than $100. It was dead cheap to That's do it online. It was... And it took like twenty minutes. It was like <laughs> fill out a form, click a few buttons. Uh, it, it, it was uh, it was very much like the t-shirts. It was uh, do the thing, click the button, send the money, and I was ordained. There you go. All right, uh, back to this kind of lightning round of questions. Ideally, go on, go on. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just kind of scrolling through. Uh, Captain Barber forgets to tag us, but he does say, "Where do you guys stream um, your other stuff?" So everything that Top Clack does is streamed to this channel. Twitch.tv slash TopClack. Nothing else. TopClack is all here, and that's it. Yep. So simple pre that. pretty simple. So if, yeah, if you follow this channel, you'll always be notified when we go live. Assuming you enable notifications. Yep. Um, or watch the Discord, because the or, or, the yeah, Or join the Discord. That's linked below. Yep. Uh, Talisman Solutions asking a question for Jay. Tell us what the most quote-unquote posh aspect of your life is, please. I'm not posh at all. So there's there's no posh aspect of my life. There isn't uh, one. Yeah, same. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zetotropic asking, when do you use the stock springs that come with switches? Uh, if I like them enough and I don't feel the need to change them. For me, it's if I've never used the springs. It's, so I used a switch before. So the first time I ever use a switch, I always like to use it stock. If I use it in subsequent builds, I will tend to tw tweak or change things I didn't like from the original build. Uh, yep, yeah, that's that's pretty much how I feel about it as well. I, I like to have a, a reference point if I'm using a Switch for the first time. You know, no lube, use the stock spring, so you kind of get an idea of what it feels like normally. And then you can start modifying it, then you can be like, okay, well now that I know what it's like normally, I know what it's going to be like after I lube it, etc. Um, yeah. But yeah. Lake Boredom. Is that, yeah, Lake Boredom. Well, Boredom. Um, <laughs> asking, uh, what housings did you guys like the UHMW stems in? So I've only tried them in Gateron housings and Marshmallow housings, and I thought they were fine in both. I, I tried them in my spare alpaca housings, and I was really impressed, and I also liked them in ink housings. Cool. Very nice. I do think that they probably shined the most in Gateron housings, just because of how cheap Gateron switches are. Um... 
I don't, because I don't like, uh, I talked about this on the stream the other day, but I don't really like really expensive switches, like really expensive hybrid switches. Because once you start swapping out parts like springs, stems, you know, you put in films, you start lubing, stuff like that. You swap out parts from three or four different switches. Switches can get expensive. You know, you start paying two and a half, three, four dollars a switch for all these parts. It, it loses a lot of the interest for me. I like to keep it a little bit more cheap. So the Gateron housings are, are certainly what I recommend. Depleted Vespine asking, not counting the intended random build, have you ever done a serious build with differing switches? How many kinds is the record? Yes, I've done a couple. Uh, so quite often what I used to do when I had uh, a huge store of, uh, of, of Nixes and Hirose uh, switches, I would put them in as escape keys. Um, I'm going to do that every time I mention the switch. I, I, I hope you do. I hope you do. <laughs> Uh, I used to put those on the escape all the time because I just had a load of them and it was kind of to use them. Um, I also like to use uh, on some builds if I'm using like a full size board and it might have like a numpad or something like that. Like, uh, I don't know. Like if, I, if I was building HBCP uh, and I was going to use caps lock as caps lock instead of control, which I usually swap it to, uh, I quite like to use MX lock switches on caps lock. That's quite fun. Uh, but one of the coolest things I did was one of the first boards I built uh, when I streamed, which I can't even remember what board it was now. I think it might have been a clipper, actually. But on the, the modified keys, I used tactile switches. And on the uh, alphas and space bar, I used linear switches. Uh, and that was a really, really interesting type of experience because you could really tell when you pressed the modifier key, it was quite a stark difference. Um, and uh, ergonomically, I found that quite useful. Um, that was that, I used that board an awful lot after I built it. Uh, I've kind of moved away from doing that now, but it, it kind of makes me think maybe I should try it again because um, I really did like that when I built it. Cool. Uh, Lake Boredom with another question asking, it's a good one too. Uh, how do you guys try out new linears, new boards every time, or desolder old builds? So what I usually do is I like to have one or two kind of reference boards that I use um, for testing switches. Generally, they're going to have a hot swap PCB just because convenience. Um, the one I use probably the most right now is my Ramaworks M60A. I know some people aren't a big fan of that board because it does use an integrated plate. A lot of people are not big fans of that. For testing new switches, I actually find that the integrated plate is the way to go because you the switch can't hide anything at that point. Like you're going to know everything about the switch when it's on a unit or on a um, an integrated plate. Um, it's going to be very consistent. Everything's going to feel and sound the same because it's hey integrated. So I like doing that, and I like to just use them stock, like we mentioned before. So you know how the spring is. Is it good? Is it bad? You know how smooth it is. Is it really smooth? Is it really scratchy? And then you can start making modifications after that. Or you can just break them in there, because, you know, as it, it's, it acts as kind of a te test bench as well as a break-in board. So a lot of yeah. switches benefit from um, usage before you leave them. Um, whether it's only like a couple days or a week or two weeks or a month or whatever, uh, a lot of switches really do benefit from that break-in period. So I think having uh, just like one hot swap board, I used to use a um, an HHKB Tofu from KBD Fans. Very inexpensive board, integrated plate, comes with a hot swap PCB. Is it fancy? No, not at all. But does it get the job done for testing new switches and breaking in switches? Absolutely. So yeah, that's the approach I've always taken. See, I do something very similar. I've got a HS60 ISO BCB, which is hot swap, which I use for that. And I use my Noxury T60 case, and I just drop it in, test out the switches, start cutting this with the alpacas for a day, use them, tried them. Sometimes the switches benefit from breaking in, like creams absolutely do. Uh, to be honest, they, I didn't feel like the alpacas did at all. I don't feel like they need breaking in. Um, you know, it, it's great for doing that as well. So I do almost the same as Brian. I use them in their stock, and then I'll decide before I do a build stream how I'm going to change or tweak the switch. Usually I will just lube it at that point and go for because it's the first time I'm using that particular switch. Uh, if it's second, third, fourth, fifth build I've done with those switches, then I will probably experiment with different springs, sprit springs or TX springs or something like that, different lubing methodologies as well. Um, or maybe even try and put in UHM uh, stems in them, you know, different things like that. So, but yeah, I do exactly the same. Possible board for testing switches. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's too easy. And especially it's it's so accessible nowadays to, you know, you can get hot swap PCBs for pretty cheap, cases for pretty cheap, plates for pretty cheap. Really not that hard to put together a, an inexpensive hot swap board for a test bench or break-in board. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Yep. All right, and it looks like that's actually... Oh, wait, no. He forgets to tag us. But, uh, hold on, wait, let me try to find this again. Crap. 
Uh, Etsy13 is asking if uh, if we liked the V2 Tangies, so the, the V2 Tangerine switches from TKC. Um, oh, man. I Mine haven't arrived yet. I, I, I think I was told I was getting some by TKC, but I haven't actually gotten any in yet, so I don't know. Okay. I, I yeah, wish. and I know Rise has posted mine because he was sending me something else with them, uh, so I know they're on the way, but I haven't got them as yet. Yeah, I have no idea on the status of mine. I should probably ask, to be totally honest. Um, Talisman uh, tags me and says, might be one of those guys, uh, or he says that I might be one of those guys whose life com completely falls apart if I win the lottery, because uh, I would have so much wealth that chasing value would be irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to win the lottery. It'd be nice to never, ever worry about money, like, again, that'd be kind of cool, right? But at the same time, yeah. value is really interesting, man. I, I just, it, I, it's, it, it's in all aspects of my life, and I can really kind of showcase it in the, uh, the keyboard hobby in particular, but I love a good value, man. doesn't matter what it is. Food, otherwise, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I think you'll find a lot of very rich people uh, tend to be quite thrifty with their money as well. So, yeah, I don't think having money necessarily means you have expensive tastes. Yeah. Uh, Bobby McBobby, which is a fantastic username, by the way, um, asking, where do you guys get your springs from? Good question. Uh, a few a few different places. Uh, Sprit directly. Uh, TX keyboards for TX springs. Um, and those are the only two aftermarket springs I tend to use these days. Okay. Yep. So I, I, I kind of agree. I, too, have ordered directly from Sprit. And uh, there's a lot of uh, resellers for Sprit springs as well, all throughout the community. Not hard to find. Um, yeah. Yeah, TX uh, springs I'll a lot of people have been liking. Uh, Thick Thock has a couple springs that I really enjoy. Um, I don't know if they're in stock right now, but uh, Thick Thock is a, is a good place if you like some more unique springs. But uh, I think it's, Sprit is kind of like the uh, the kind of main area people go to just because he has such a variety of weights and styles, and the product is kind of tried and true. It's good and consistent. We all know that, and it's accessible, and it's not very expensive. So yeah, a lot of people kind of just default to Sprit, but there are certainly other places as well. All right, I think that looks like the final question. So fantastic! We we kept it under two hours, Jay. We have about eight minutes to go yeah. until our two-hour mark. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really really happy with that because yeah. it means that I can get plenty of sleep tonight, which is really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jay getting some sleep like a, is 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 good. good. How do you guys? Before we head off here in a moment, how do you guys in chat feel about this? Do you guys feel like the uh, the more streamlined, more concise episode feels nicer? You get that sub two hour mark versus like a three or three and a half hour mark. I'm actually curious to know the thoughts on it because I know some people, uh, you know, like to joke and meme and just say that we should just stream for like ever. But uh, I, I'm curious to know like what people honestly feel because I feel like I would have, as a viewer, I would have a lot of trouble watching a three and a half hour stream on a Thursday night if I worked the next day in the morning or something. <clears throat> Yeah, so Jeff Leppard says he likes the fast page stuff. Uh, Mr. Petrov says definitely prefer the two hours is perfect. Frothy K says, says I love the streamlined version. Okay, so I think doing this seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah it seems like most people kind of prefer it. Um, Jeff Leppard also brings up some stuff doesn't deserve as much attention as it might get. And that's true, too. You know, we do this show live. Jay and I aren't perfect. We make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes we, you know, we ramble too much. We cover a topic for too long. Uh, yeah. this, this is just the kind of structure that we have, um, and we kind of work with what we got. But we I are think... going to be trying to actively change a lot of things going forward, just so we can achieve that more more streamlined, more concise, more professional kind of feel, while still keeping yeah. it kind of casual. Because you know, that's what I, I, I agree. I think I think what we should definitely do is wherever we start to feel like we're digressing too much. Sometimes we have some really interesting things to tell you guys about, you know, histories or how certain design influences happen or how manufacturing works, whatever it is. We kind of go away from the board a little bit and we talk about something else uh, which is related, and then we come back to the board. Or finish talking about the board and then move on to the topic what we should probably do is where we have those distractions if you should probably wrap those into this section uh, and we'll just make a note that oh we want to talk about that we'll come back to it at the end of the show and not do them which is one of the things we tried to do today i was very conscious of not digressing too much away from the actual points we were trying to talk about um so yeah so we'll absolutely uh, uh try to take that on board yeah, fair enough. Uh, Lake Boredom brings up uh, an interesting point. He says, hey, VODs are there if it goes long. I'd rather have all the news, uh, all the week's news covered. So we, we're not trying to do less news. 
Um, we we still try, regardless of the the approach we're taking. We always try to get all of the news that we kind of deem as important, as in like. Does it have potential? Is it going to make it to group by? Do people care about this? We try to filter kind of through that and then pick what we choose uh, from that. And just because we're trying to streamline the time of the show doesn't mean we're going to do any less news. We're going to do the same amount of news if there's, you know, four topics in a week or if there's 24 topics in a week. That's what we're going to try to do. But we want to try to streamline every aspect of the stream. So that way we can try to keep it to a relatively short time. Obviously, if we're trying to keep it to two hours, sometimes we're going to go over. Because sometimes there's going to be a lot of news. Sometimes there isn't going to be very much news. Sometimes we're going to have more things to, you know, kind of educate people on and ramble on about. Sometimes we're not going to have anything. But, uh, you know, the idea at the end of the day is we still want to cover all the important news topics. And we still want to try to make sure that people kind of understand, um, you know, our thoughts, our opinions, and how we feel about things. As well as, you know, maybe some information that you didn't know before. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Petrov says it's hard to justify sitting in front of the PC for three hours. Well, so I don't know if you know this, but you can get the Twitch app on most smart TVs these days. So you can actually watch us from the comfort of your own couch. Yes, that is absolutely true. You don't have to be sat at the PC. All right. Well, I think uh, <laughs> since there are no more questions, let's just wrap it up now and let this be the first show in I don't even know how long that's officially under two hours. I, I'm, yeah, I'm almost I'm almost scared. I don't know what to do with myself right now, Jim. Yeah, well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the toilet and go straight to bed. That's exactly what I'm going to do because it means that I'll get a <laughs> nice sleep. I can get up. It's four o'clock. I can get up at eight a.m. Work from home. I get another four hours sleep. It's going to yeah. be a good night. I'm really happy about this. Really happy about it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, any clothing? Clothes? Any clothing, Jay? Are you making any clothing? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not making any clothing. Sorry. But uh, do you have any closing thoughts? I do, yeah. So uh, this week, come and check out my stream on Sunday. I'll be building my jerkin. Uh, we'll also be doing the J score for the Lubriganti because whilst I built the Lubriganti last week, oh, that's upside down. Uh, whilst I built the Lubriganti last week, I didn't get around to doing the J score because I'd locked myself out of my uh, account briefly. That's all fixed now. So I did it right before the show. I put in the wrong bloody password and I was confident it was the right password. And then I realized I was logging into my work uh, Gmail account, not my actual oh. personal Gmail account. I was like, oh, for God's sake. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so I locked myself out. Um, anyway, that's all fixed now. So we'll do the J score for this uh, cool. first thing on the build stream, and then we'll be building the jerkin, which is kind of the thirty percent Alice layout as well from uh, the forty percent Discord. So I'm really excited for that as well. So yeah, looking forward to that stream. Uh, also behind the keyboard this week, I'll be watching that because I might be a guest apparently on it. So I need to watch <laughs> that just in case I am a guest. Um, so yeah, don't worry, guys. J is not the guest. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, but yes, but yes, behind the keyboard, the first episode tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, same time as today's show started, but it's going to be tomorrow, obviously. So uh, make sure you come show up for that and, uh, you know, get some good interview goodness going on. It should be a pretty good one. I'm a really big yeah. fan of uh, this particular guest, actually. Yeah, yeah. And jokes aside, I am as well. I think it's going to be a really, really good interview. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be try I'll try and watch it live. Given the time, I might not be able to, but I will try and watch it live. Yep, so make sure to come check that out tomorrow. Again, 6 p.m. Pacific, easy peasy. Then Sunday at noon Pacific or 8 UK time, you can check out Jay's build stream. Definitely do that. And then, of course, next week, same time, same place, Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, we'll have another episode of this show here. So make sure you uh, make sure you follow. Make sure you check below the stream. You can find a link to our YouTube channel. Go subscribe there. You can catch all the VODs and other various content that we put there. Uh, as well as our official Discord server, also linked below. Come uh, come join that. Check it out. You can talk about, I don't know, keyboards or, you know, tortillas or video games. There's something for everything there. Something for everyone. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty pretty cool. There's a lot of great people there. If you need help with anything, we have a mech support channel. And, uh, yeah, so awesome. I, I feel so awkward ending the show this early. It feels wrong, but so right also. No, we, we should end it directly on the hour, just because it'll be on the hour. Should it's we? Like a minute left or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. We'll... Like 30, 30, 30 seconds. So you should you should get ready now to roll the outro in like okay. I don't know, like I'm twenty seconds. I'm so ready right now. I'm gonna roll the outro as soon as it turns. Yeah, as soon as it turns, just roll the outro and then we'll be gone. So what we've we got like That's fifteen right. seconds, something like that. Until, yeah. until then, you guys just have to look. <laughs> you just have to stare at us. You just have to look look just... into our faces. <laughs> Go play the lottery, says Talisman. I, <laughs> I'm not much of a lottery guy. I don't, I don't know. Lottery seems like a waste of money to me. Yeah, I would agree. Oh, oh, it's eight. All right, I'm gonna roll the outro.
Hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as we did, and make sure to tune in tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific, for Behind the Keyboard. Heck yes. Enjoy the rest of your day, See you everyone. Guys. See you later, guys. Thank you.